Now you for real?
nigga, please. going on everybody we'll be starting in a minute phone lines are always open 339-209-5296 is going on peace and blessings to everybody out there we got a lot to talk about um i was gonna use uh my notes today but we're gonna leave it open today you can call in uh chime in on what's going on today and we'll do it like that today we'll keep it uh keep it cool for a little while and just relax it's too much going on right now d what's going on thanks for stopping in uh if you are checking us out tonight, uh, please, in the chat, uh, feel free to let me know uh, who's watching. Um, this new format, I can't see exactly who's watching. They don't. They, yeah. Anyways, it's a lot going on in the news right now. A lot going on in general. I just wanted to uh, take some time out to see what you guys thought about what's going on. And then we can go from there. You know, that call in number is 339-209-5296. I'm not going to rant today. I'm going to just listen, see what you guys feel. And uh, see if we can come to a conclusion or uh, have a, a productive conversation today. Got a couple people watching. Let me check on Facebook. YouTube right fast. Okay. You know, we uh, normally start. Uh, we start when we start and people start calling in. Um, remember, uh, Reconstruction of the Dinner Table. I'm your host, Ray Ray. And uh, if you look up uh, Reconstruction of the Dinner Table, uh, please subscribe to uh, YouTube, like the video, don't like the video, uh, and also on Facebook, like or dislike the video. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Today, slow start. It's a lot going on. Everybody got their lives going on right now. Uh, they got boots on the ground, whether if it's productive or counterproductive, they out there. A lot going on. Um, I ain't even going to go off my notes today. Like I said, we just going to see what y'all are feeling. Um, that number is 339-209-5296. We are open. Uh, yeah, right. D, what's going on, man? Call in. Let's have that chat, man. We had a good conversation this weekend while you was in the A. Got some business done. Uh, let's see here. 
Hope everybody is in good health. Look like uh, the coronavirus took a break for the uh, festivities that's going on. Ain't that something? Again, if you are watching, please let me know you are watching. Hit me in the chat. Let me know you're here. Also, you can give us a call. Number right here, 339-209-5296. Um, today it is quiet. This is our first day back. Uh, I was going to relaunch for this month, but it's too much stuff going on. Uh, started my inter interview series this, this month, but it don't look like um, – okay, for sure, uh, D. Um, you can call in at any time. You are always welcome. You know, this is an open platform for people to um, to vent, uh, to talk about the issue, to talk about uh, what's going on in the community today. Um, so that's what we're going to be focusing on. Again, that number is 339-209-5296. Uh, I had to get my Teen Wolf uh, situation going. Got a, a nice little cut. I took that penitentiary chance. Man, I don't like this the way this is. I can't see who's watching. See if I go here. Give me one second. It's a lot of people out here doing the work. That's like really doing the work. Um, shout out to them. It's plenty of people. Tori Lowe, he out here. Um, Antonio Moore, Yvette Carnell, Rhonda Mary, uh, Ron Hurd. It's plenty of people out here doing it. Um, I should have said the cities that they were from. Uh, how is this? Janetta Springfield, what's going on? Let me hold on. Thanks for stopping in and checking us out. How do I? Let's see if we can get a uh, a conversation going. Again, that number is 339-209-5296. Let's talk about uh, the president. Uh, let's talk about um, these uh, uh, peaceful slash violent protests. Uh, Janetta, you can always call in if you wanted to uh, voice your opinion. Uh, really appreciate the support. That number is 339-209-5296. Hope to hear from you. Um, and then my regulars will start calling in once they get settled and stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going we gonna to try to bust it wide open. I know who I need to. Because it's, it's a lot going on today. And I'm on one man uh, team. Uh, so... Bear with me for a bit. See what's going on with YouTube one more time. Again, this platform is an open platform, uh, a chance for you guys to call in and vent. Um, no opinion is a wrong opinion. Um, you know, uh, something just popped up on about Obama. I want to talk about him too today and try to go full circle in what's going on. Um, and then... Next week, if everything cool down, we can start our interview uh, sessions. 
for different things that different people uh, on this platform wanted to hear. La la. Latrice, what's going on? Thanks for stopping in. Hope you can call in today. Um. I hope y'all are out here safe. If you are in the mix, please be safe. Um, so I want to hear you guys' opinion on um, what is going on today. Again, that call-in number is 339-209-5296. We always start a little slow once the uh, my regulars get in and start calling. And then new people pop in and out. We normally have uh, 150 to 300 and something people coming in and out, chiming in. What's up, sis? Tomia. She, you are in Minnesota. I would like to hear what your thoughts is uh, from that standpoint. Uh, Janetta, if you're still watching uh, in, the, in, the, in the comments, can you uh, let me know where you're from and what your age group is? And uh, Latrice, I would like to hear what's going on in um, D.C. Um, and see what's going on. Uh, Scott, what's going on, brother? Hope you can call in today. Again, that number is somewhere in this area right there. Three three nine two zero nine five two nine six. It costs you nothing, and also, um, yeah, I had news clips and I had this show ready when I was upset, but I kind of calmed down and instead of me doing a rant, this show is not about me. This is about you getting your views out and having a conversation with people that might not have the same viewpoint as you. And we have a productive conversation within the community. What's going on, Kamis? Happy birthday, belated birthday. Could you could you pull it up for me? Thank you. Yep, 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 yep. Still uh, kind of letting people slide in just to get it going. Uh, AD, you got to call in. For some reason, when I, um, because the way I got it set up, I can't add uh, cameras on. Um, I do have the Skype, so I think I should switch over to Zoom because don't nobody use Skype no more, I don't think. But I got it set up to where either or can interface with this, so we'll have uh, that option too um, today. Again, everybody that's watching today, we just going to listen to y'all and see what y'all feel. There's uh, plenty of different cities in here. We got Minnesota. We got D.C. We got Atlanta. We got Milwaukee. Um, right now, that's about it. Gracias. Hot cocoa. So, yeah, I want to talk about what y'all, how y'all feeling about uh, the president and his response. Phoenix is in the building. Janetta, thank you. Um, Phoenix is in the building. Uh, and we'll have people coming in and out. Again, the phone line is always open to start the conversation. Um I had a standpoint that I when when this first start popping off the protests and everything, uh, and uh, with George Floyd, um, but uh, right now to me I don't have the Zoom set up. I just got the Skype set up, and then the the screen that I have for that, um, I I I didn't put the um, uh, the codes and stuff in to interface with this but for future ones we can but you can always call that number is 
Uh, see, we want to we want to we want to have a productive conversation today. Uh, feel free to share this. Um, feel free to share it. Invite people over to the conversation. Again, no, no opinion is a bad opinion because if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. But we have to start teaching the youth how to um, converse without conflict. Um, and that's the point I wanted to make today with what's everything that's going on. Um, that That's very um, important right now. Uh, Work, I've been working on a couple projects. Um, I took a month, two weeks off of the show. Um, hold on, we got our first caller, 414. Let me log you in. 414, what's your name? Where you calling from? And what age group are you in? Name is Deron, and I'm in the age group of mm-hmm. 35 Cool, cool. Let's get this conversation started. And my sister, Minnesota, Miss Minnesota, Tamia, what's going on? I see that you, uh, child, you jumped in. Pretty much. Um, well, I'm on. I'm actually in St. Paul, and it's kind of calm in St. Paul right now. Um, sophomore year, I feel like has been, you know, kind of. Uh, I'm going to just say it's it's been destroyed. Um, Target is not opening up their stores, at least nine of their stores, one in which was looted in South Minneapolis. The third precinct was burned down. There are some banks that were burnt down. Everything is boarded up. It looks like a third world country. People have graffiti walls. Um, People have graffitied the walls in the name of Black Lives Matter. Um, you can't really tell. You can't really tell the. You, unless you're on the ground with them, you can't tell the protesters from the rioters. Um, and it's just been crazy. The buses have been shut down. Uh, our public transportation is shut down until. Uh, further notice, I'm hoping by tomorrow everything is up and running, but right now we have no transportation. The Mall of America was supposed to open today. They postponed. Um, curfew set. We had, uh, we still have military on, on the ground, so it's just, it's crazy. Um, I had a hard time getting to work because I work in South Minneapolis. Uh, well, not a hard time. My husband take me, but um, had it not for me, had it not been for him taking me, I probably would not have my job because I would have been missing too many days. But it's it's been crazy. A lot of a lot of people are angry. Um, a lot of people are saying it's been um, it's it's been it's it was high time that we um, really show them what we can do and I mean they went on the basis of the 400 years of slavery and this is what we're ending up with we're not even sure what businesses and small businesses black owned businesses businesses have been attacked I don't know if it's by our African American youth or by people that are posing as Black Lives Matter. Um, majority of the people that they, at first, they believed that there were people coming from out of town, um, taking over hotels around the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Don't know. Um, 
don't know how true that was. A lot of the hotels were saying that they were families that were displaced by COVID or homeless. Um, so it's just been, it's just been one of those weird things, you know, that you don't expect to happen in your lifetime. You know, you read about them from decades ago and when you actually live something that you never thought you'd live in, it's just a weird situation. Um, the family did actually have his memorial service and his, they showed a picture of his daughter actually, um, asking why her dad wouldn't talk to her. And then when they lowered him in the ground, she said, why is my daddy not talking to me? And that's hard to see because now this young lady has, this little girl has to grow up to be a a woman without her father. Mm -hmm. And at the hands of police. And it's just sad, you know. Um, He'll never see her graduate. You know, none of the milestones he'll be there for. Mm -hmm. And all because someone felt, all because a police officer felt some kind of way about a black man. And I just, I mean, it's sad. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, hey Duran, uh, what is Milwaukee looking like over there? Um, and also, Regina, thanks for stopping in. Hope you can uh, get a chance to call in. That number is on the screen. Um, uh, Duran, did you want to chime in? So right now, um I hear that they kind of everywhere, but the one that I just saw about 10 minutes ago was uh, down on the east side near Oakland, and it it looked real peaceful, Um, mixed crowd. But here, since I got, you know, I just got back yesterday. I was in Atlanta for the weekend. That was kind of wild too. But here, since I got back, I noticed that when it gets dark, and it's not quite dark yet, but when it gets dark, that's when the younger crowd comes out and the more aggressive crowd. So we'll see how that looks, if it turns over or if they chill. But there's a 9 o'clock curfew up here, too. Okay. Yeah, because when you was down here, they they uh they let off the sirens. Um, uh, Lati, uh, if you can join the conversation, we'll love to hear from you. Uh, thanks for uh, watching and supporting. I appreciate that. Turn the mic down a little bit. I'm kind of. Yep. The other part of that, too, and I should say that there were some peaceful protests as well. There were also churches out by the girls praying throughout the streets of South Minneapolis. Um, very well known also um, in North Minneapolis in itself. Um, people were out protecting their property. My brother-in-law, who was a pastor, um, actually sat out with a couple of his men, sat out in front of the church um, to protect their property because, you know, people feel like they've, they've invested in these businesses, these churches, and, you know, to have someone come and just tear down a city you know, they feel like there's a better way. I also want to say that right now um, our elderly are not able to get their medications because the the places where they were getting them are shut down. Um, and, you know, they were already shut. Some of them were shut down due to COVID, but now it's just shut down. And some places right. are saying they're not sure that they are going to open at the moment. Uh, food for people on both north and south side have um, have been cut off. But the good thing about it is they've had many um, people come and donate things that are needed, diapers, food, um, water, um, detergent, and all that other stuff. I mean, mounds and mounds of needed things and so they were able to distribute those things to the people that needed them and they still had things left over so um they're getting their needs met it's just that um 
when you're used to being able to go and do it yourself or whatever, it's it tends to be hard because you're looking at your community and you're asking why. So mm, it's somebody, uh somebody nine o'clock curfew. The heart is hard to look at. That's that nine o'clock curfew. The thirty minute before nine yep. o'clock curfew. That, that was my phone. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Tamia. Go ahead. Oh, let me uh, send a shout out oh, to okay. everybody that just popped in. Uh, I say a lot T. Hey, what's going on, Isaac? Hope you can call in today. Uh, but Tamia, uh, continue in your statement, and then we're gonna um, uh, ask a couple questions. No, I was just saying it's hard, it's hard to look at. I had I was um, dropped off this morning, and I looked over the interstate and looked at all the buildings that were vibrantly um, vibrant at one point. People were outside all the time, um, even in the in the downtown area. I don't know what the downtown area looks like. I can't get to it, but just looking over the interstate and seeing all these buildings boarded up, it's, it's, it just looks sad. It's sad. It's, you know, it's a third world country. And I'm not saying that, you know, protesting is wrong. It's when it becomes uh, deadly on both ends for the protesters and, you know, at the hands of the police and vice versa. Um, I don't know. It it affects everybody. It affects everybody. Um, But it's just sad to see that it took all of this, and they still haven't convicted the other three. They have one. The, they have the main cop in custody mm-hmm. as of so, uh, uh, last week. But but slow down. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna get into that. We can't give them everything right away. We gotta. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. We'll take, uh, but we got uh, Emma. Uh, uh, just uh, chimed in. Uh, Chicago. Uh, Emma, I would want to hear uh, what you see what's going on in Chicago as well. Um, uh, Dee, did you want to speak to uh, uh, what Tamia just said? And anybody that's in a uh, a city that I haven't named that's watching, uh, we would love to hear from you and see what you got going on and what your thoughts is. Um, and then we'll 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 start uh, breaking down what we wanted to talk about today specifics yeah it's a lot similar here um i'm gonna say it's not really as bad they kind of tore up um king drive a little bit they got a walgreens boost mobile and then a couple other places were like kind of vandalized but um it wasn't uh, like a whole lot of damage everywhere but they kind of predicting it so a lot of stores are shutting down and taking precautions and putting boards up and doing what they can do. Um, last night they drove around, and it's crazy because they like, they let them destroy all the, I'm, I'm going to say the ghetto. King Drive is probably the ghetto in, in every city, I'm pretty sure, but in ours it is. So that's where like a lot more of the black businesses are at or where the black people are at. And then when the traffic was driving around by Shorewood and kind of the, the richer part of the east side near the lake and whatnot, mm-hmm. they, they had it set up. Those little counties had it set up where they would detour them right back to where they came from. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah, there's a big – so now there's a, um, you know, a thing going on like, well, yeah, they knew what they was doing. They let them – destroy their own community and they won't let them come out there. And so there's a lot of bickering going on between that. Mm-hmm. So it, it's 50, 50 with me because in one way you can look at it like, yeah, they did let them do that. And they protect the nares. But another way is also they got a heads up. So it's different when you mm-hmm. get a heads up, you know what I'm saying? They kind of mm-hmm. attacked them by storm. They got the police station. And um, it, it's been kind of peaceful. Like, I, I don't think I've seen anybody get hurt. I've heard that somebody got shot point blank range with a rubber bullet by the police. I actually saw a video of it, but 
I can't really prove it was here. But somebody told me that was here. So that would be the most mm-hmm. violent thing you've done in here. Okay. Okay. They 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 made a a, a nationwide uh map of where the protests are going uh throughout the United States. Um I'm trying to share mm-hmm. it. Uh just give me mo- a moment. Um uh, and I'll share that with you guys. Uh, Scott, you and Callie, I, I would like to see what's going on with Callie when you got uh, when you can chime in all, as well. Um, I just got the alert for our um, curfew. It's 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. for tonight. So, wow. Yep, it's 250 protests. And rallies that's going on throughout the United States right now. Um, more towards the East Coast. Let me see if I can share this shortly. Um, to me, uh, go ahead. With, you can finish your statement while I uh, try to add this on. Well, um, I just pulled up the. Um, I just pulled up the order, and they're saying that. The violators of this of this order um, are fined up to a thousand dollars in imprisonment for not more than ninety days. So, people that are exempt or people that are traveling to and from work, I don't know if it it may be different in each state. Um, emergency care, if you're seeking emergency care, fleeing danger, or experiencing homelessness. Um, and I got some questions about that because I'm supposed to be traveling out of state. So, hey, uh, Lati, I, I see you in the chat right now. Uh, if you call in and um, uh, make that statement live, I want to, I want to, I want you to um, hash that out a little bit and give us a little more information, um, and, and see if we can uh get that i'm trying to get this uh this map where all the protests are up um i did hear that uh memphis pre-warned their their uh city i'm not sure how true that is but yeah Uh, it, it's something. It's something that's going on. Oh, that's not big enough. That's not gonna be big enough. I don't think that's gonna be big enough for us. Change it to the whole thing. I'm gonna share the map with you guys uh, momentarily, just so you guys can get an idea. And when you think. Uh, strategy wise just look at where the dots are the red dots are oh you can't see it yet the red dots are where the protests are okay i'm gonna pull it up so i can but I'm, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn the volume off of my tablet so i can not put uh, friction yeah. So, uh, hey, uh, D, can you can, can you guys see that on your side, on your end? Uh, I actually don't have mine on because I'm using my other phone, so I'm using one to talk and one to finish these notes. Oh, okay, got you. My bad. Uh, who we got? We just got a couple more people that just came in. Mother-in-law, what's going on? Hey, thanks for stopping in. Really appreciate you watching. Um, Paul, what's going on? Jill, uh, hey, how y'all doing? Hope you enjoy the show. Mm. Uh, again, um, let me know if you can if you get if you get feedback. So I can, okay. I'm trying to adjust my volume so I can look at this. Okay. Sure. So wow, that's pretty big. Uh huh. That call-in number is 339-209-5296 if you want to join the conversation. Uh, and then we'll, once once we get it going, we'll, we'll start uh, 
asking the questions and everything and seeing what you feel about Pacific things. Uh, again, that number is 339-209-5296. Let me put that map back up there because I didn't know the number by heart. So if you if you look at that, uh, you you can see it in Milwaukee. You can see it in Chicago. That might be Kenosha and Madison. Uh, Definitely Madison. Yeah, that's Madison up further north, all over Michigan. Illinois is not really. As for, for it to be such a, a a big plot of land, it's just well, in that. I, I can speak on Illinois too. Um, Chicago, I don't know if you know much about um, Michigan Ave, but man, they they rated it. They they got them good. They who got they hit the Rolex store. Who got who good? And boxing people outside. You got to like get, yeah. They, they Chicago went down. Um, yeah. So I don't know about the outskirts like that. Well, actually, on my way back, I actually flew from Atlanta to Chicago, and then um, Marlon actually came to get me, my guy. And as we drove, mm-hmm. we were going to stop at Gurney and grab some gas. And when we stopped at Gurney, they was, like, packing everything up. I guess they was getting ready for the uh, protest to come, this lady said. All the way in, oh, my goodness, wow. I mean, but it is. Yeah, Chicago probably got it the worst. From what I heard, like, people was walking down the street with couches. <laughs> uh, somebody I'm had sorry. a horse. I don't know where he got the horse from, but he was riding down the street on a horse. I knew one of those horses. One of the, um, you know, they have, the police department, they, they have all that stuff. They just don't pulled it out often. Um wow. Saya, thanks for stopping in, checking us out. Hope you join the conversation. That number again is 339-209-5296. We just trying to let you guys vent uh with what's going on. Uh, it's a couple things that uh I wanted to bring up once we uh get our uh our our, our phone calls up uh, a little bit. We have two people on the line. We got a uh, Deron from Milwaukee and Tamia from Minnesota. Um, and, uh, yeah, Isaac, a horse. Uh, it's on the Internet. You'll be able to see it. Uh-huh. Uh, that map is crazy. Yeah, that map is. Um, I was trying to figure well, out, like, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I know they were saying that they had um uh, they, the cartel, the drug cartel, um, Antifa, and a couple other um, groups uh, kind of infiltrated some of the things that's going on. I'm not quite sure how that, how true that is either. Um, you can't always go by what you hear on Facebook, but. Mm-hmm. That map, though, I, I mean, seems to me it's hitting communities that, um, or states that have majority black communities. I don't know. Maybe that's just my thinking. I mean. I want to touch on uh, w- with the people on uh, online, uh, Duran and Tamia, and then uh, people that's watching. Uh, Lati uh, brought up a point about uh, George Soros uh, paying white groups to go out on escalades, uh, peaceful protest, and turn them into riots. Um, do any of you guys think it's um, uh, is that possible, or what do you guys think about that? I believe that they pay people to uh, go out and escalate things, um, especially. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it a few times. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you guys remember, but they were saying the same thing. I don't know if it's 
specifically the soloists, but um, when they had the the Boston um, bombing, there were people that were there that were paid to be there and paid to act a certain way. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised if that's really what's going on. The problem is how are, how are they going to change that? Uh, that we're gonna pose that question uh, in a minute. I'm just getting trying to get my phone calls up. Uh, a couple more people came in. Shay, thanks for uh, stopping in. Danielle, is that my sister or is that? I can't see the face. Brown. Uh, thanks for uh, checking us out. Uh, and uh, I know we have a a, a a nice young fan base. If you guys have any questions, I know a lot of y'all are shy when I talk to y'all on the street. But uh, if you had any questions or concerns, or if you out there, uh, give us a call in. Today is the today is the day to uh, to be heard on a small platform. So, uh, D, what did you think about the uh, the George Soro uh, conversation? Um, not exactly sure who that is, honestly. But the statement I heard, um, well, I heard from some pretty credible people that they were undercover police kind of doing the same thing. And I, I don't know their role. I can't necessarily say their role was to engage or start a riot. But definitely some undercovers have been in the um, protests and stuff, too. Mm-hmm. And I've heard their, I, you know, that's word of mouth, but I've heard their role ha- has kind of been to engage and rile folks up. And they even showed on Facebook, and I, don't, I tend not to listen to Facebook all the time, but they showed they had a picture of an officer, and they showed him in his uniform. Then they had a, another picture of him, like, with his mask kind of hanging down and, participating in the riot mm-hmm. or the, 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 I don't want to call it a riot, uh, the protest, but the violent portion. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the police officers, one of the guys that was, um, uh, in the South Minneapolis area, we found out was a, a St. Paul police officer. He had an umbrella and a mask and the girl his girlfriend actually said the mask was hers. So it's like really? So I don't I mean she told off on him but um uh, they you know how you know how people are. We we research and try to research everything and become detectives on Facebook and find out what we need to find out when we need to find it out, so I don't know what happened with that man. I don't know if they if they even arrested and fired him or not. But he was just not windows of auto zone, right on the right in South Minneapolis, not too far from the third precinct. So, and they tried to go over to the fourth, and it, I don't know what happened after that. But. We are definitely on a curfew, and I don't. I'm glad missing when a lot. Like, I'm missing a lot of the people. curfew that he is. Uh oh, I think my um, I don't know why this is so late behind. It's a lot of people that I need to give a shout out to. Fontario, thanks for stopping in. Ah, where did that go? Where did that go? Um. Jason Wayne, thanks for stopping in. Andre, thanks for checking us out. Phone lines are open today. Uh, Today, I'm not selling nothing. Phone lines are open right now, 339-209-5296. Jump in the conversation. Um, Somebody just popped in. Mario, uh, Mario Brown, thanks for stopping in and checking us out. Rio. Hopefully we can get your uh your thoughts on what's going on right now. 
I guess I'm gonna start with the question in 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 a minute. A minute. Let's see what you guys think. Um, just wanted to open up a little bit. Isaac, we would love you to get on the line. Lati, Emma, uh, Scott, waiting for you. Let's bust this thing wide open and then really have a good conversation today. Um, I'm not going to go scripted today. I was. I changed my mind because uh, I seen a lot of silliness. And it was kind of defeating the purpose of how I wanted to come at this today. Uh, so I hope I'm not hearing things. Let's see. Um, you, know, you know the thing that I... I, 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 I Got a couple people in. Uh, Missy Jackson, thank Mario you for Brown. stopping in. Um, Janetta, that offer is still open. You can uh, call in. What's going on, Mario? Mario just uh, called in. Uh, we have uh, hey, what's going on, bro? Two people on the line, uh, uh, as well as you. We got D from Milwaukee and Tamia from Minnesota. Um, right now, we're just trying to get a feel for what everybody feel about what's going on uh, in their cities. Uh, Mario, you're in Georgia. If you wanted to um, to uh, say how you feel, what's going on. Yeah, um, man, it's just I'm still processing everything, man. I think I, I feel different at different times. It, it's just probably like a lot of you are, man. It's just, you know, um, emotion. It's, it's a lot of emotions to, to deal with. Um, for the first time, I really allowed myself to engulf in um, everything that's going on from watching the video in its entirety to following, um, you know, the conferences, just saw the president on, on uh, CNN, just really keeping up with what's going on. And it just takes you through a gamut of emotions, man, something that I, I, I knew would happen. But this particular time, man, I allowed myself to, uh, you know, just be engulfed with it so that whatever pain, whatever rage, whatever hurt that I feel, man, I, I feel like that will produce change. You know, I, I, I personally, I'm just speaking for myself. I felt like if I avoided the situation, not so much avoided it, but try to self preserve, you know, what my own, my own feelings, then I might be missing out on some solutions, man. So I think rage a lot of times and hurt and anger causes us to act. And so, you know, I'm glad that I did, man. Um, you guys know I ended up writing a song about it, and you know, hopefully I'll be able to release that soon, just expressing um, my views through the song. So, But like everybody else, man, I'm – man, it's definitely hitting home and uh, just ready for things to change. Definitely. Um, definitely. Um, uh, shout out to Michelle. That's the one-two punch, Michelle and Roger. I uh, hope you guys can call in uh, at your convenience. We love to hear you. Always love to hear your um, uh, viewpoint and perspective uh, out of San Antonio. Um, uh, De Deron and Tamia, did you want to uh, follow up with what Mario said? or? Um, yeah, I, I kind of agree. Um, I pretty much felt the same way. I didn't write a song about it, but I wrote a, um, I wrote a pretty hefty book post of, I was going to save this cause I don't know how deep you're trying to get into the show or whatnot, we but gonna, we gonna go deep. We, today we, 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 we letting everybody, um, just express themselves right now. I think it's, a, uh, uh, people got a lot of, a lot bottled up and, uh, we just going to try to give them a little release. So, uh, the, fl <laughs> the floor is yours D. So I guess for me, when I watched the video, it took me back. It took me back to history. That's a caller. Yep. Uh, give me one second, D. Uh, sorry to uh, three four three four seven. What's your name? Where you calling from? <laughs> Emma, this is Chicago. Hey, Emma, what's going on? Uh, I'm gonna let um, uh. D finish his statement, uh, and then as soon as him, I'll uh, I'll introduce you, and uh, you can say how you feel. Okay. Uh, uh, please, uh, uh, everybody that uh, that's watching the show and uh, that's on the line, if you can turn your uh, volume down on the actual show, so we won't get feedback okay. in the uh, in the mics. Uh, D, go ahead. Okay. 
Tracy Cunningham, thanks so, for yeah, stopping in, I'm, checking us out. My bag, D. Just want to make sure we know everybody. Good, so, yeah, what I was going to say is um, it kind of took uh, – well, I, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with, for me, out of all the ones that happened in recent, you know, all the murders that happened to police recently, for me, that was the biggest one. And the reason why it was the biggest one is it kind of took me back to history. Because with all these other murders, you know, they was kind of secretly trying to cover it up or go by the back roads and do it, you know, and um, act, act like it was an accident or be remorseful and, you know, just, you know, they, they act like they, they were scared. They were hiding it. They were being cowardly about the murder, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But with this one, with this one, man, it was like, it was like, man, that dude tried to put on a show. That's how I felt. And it brought me back to history because, you know, back in history, one of the tactics to keep the slaves in line was they would take the biggest, strongest black mm. male and make an example out of them, kill them for, for the town to watch, for the slaves to watch, and kind of look at the slaves like, you know, any one of y'all could be next. You see who we just took down, y'all biggest, y'all. And that's what I felt about him. He was so big, man, that, um, you know, um, I can't even remember his name right now. Stephen Jackson, him mm-hmm. and Stephen Jackson grew up together or whatnot, called each other twins. And Stephen Jackson is 6'8". I don't know exactly how tall he is, but he was a bigger guy. And to see that, man, how they broke him down and ha- have a man of that size, of that stature, so strong, crying for his mama at the end like a child. And, and just the emotions and the body of this officer, it was just like, I love what I'm doing, I hate you, and I know the world is watching. And he kind of, like, looked into the cameras and, like, I just felt it. Mm-hmm. Where all the other ones looked, at, like, real cowardly. Like, you know, they, they tried to act like it didn't happen or, you know, secretly do it. Where this guy kind of put a show. So for me, you know, that was, that was the outrage that kind of, Broke me down, man. When I watched the video, I, w- I was in tears because of the, I couldn't believe it. Like the, the audacity of him to, and there's people pleading for his life, like, hey, he can't breathe. Can you stop? And for him to show what he showed, man, that's a hateful guy, man, and he didn't care that the world was watching. Mm. And, you know, I, I'm not for the looting or none of this stuff, but when you see something like that, man, what do you expect people to do? Like, like, what do you expect? You expect people to be civilized because nothing about that was civilized. And then you turn around mm-hmm. and give this autopsy of, of him dying of natural causes and, and the officer getting third degree like, like it was some type of accident. No, the people are going to be outraged. They're, this, in my opinion, you know, I, I, I don't want the violence. But in my opinion, you expect us to... to be peaceful right now? This is what's going to happen. We want some type of justice. So, you know, that that's how I felt about it, and I, I ran it on, on my post. I felt, and I kind of feel like in, in this situation, you can't tell a person how to, how to feel about their trauma. You don't know how they feel, what they're going through, so people are going to lash out differently. Mm. You know, you can try to educate people and, and heal them and help them, but I can't tell you how to hurt everybody's hurt is different. You know, you don't know what the next person went through. This person might have seen his father get murdered by an officer, while another person's uncle might be a great officer. Those two people are probably going to feel totally different about the situation and about police. Mm, so point, that they might point, react. Good point. Good so that's point. kind of my whole take on it, man. That's my whole spiel in one little summary. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, uh, Jason, uh, a.k.a. Flawless, for uh, checking us out. Uh, you can call in if you like, uh, 339-209-5296. Uh, Michelle, you are – ooh, nope. Emma, you are the new caller. Sorry about that. Uh, what's going on in Chicago, and how do you feel about what's going on? Um, Chicago is really fucked up. Um, it's really pretty much out of control right now. Um the majority of the protesting slash looting is rolling in waves. So it's starting in the city and then now it's moving up to the suburbs. And 
it's, it's just a crazy situation. Mm. I feel that um, a lot of the people have hijacked the real meaning of what this is. Isaac. Mm -hmm. And I do like how the media is recognizing that and calling that out. Uh, definitely. Uh, I just want to, uh, introduce two new people that came in. Uh, is that you, uh, with the uh, police being in the background, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I apologize. Oh, uh, no worries. No worries. I was trying to be funny and that ended up being you. Isaac, thanks for, uh, stopping in. Uh, Isaac is online. And then we got another caller, 561. What's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, this is Tracy. I'm calling from down in Florida. Oh, okay. What's going on, Tracy? We'll get to you. Uh, actually, you were, you were, uh, you were. You, actually, you're up next. Uh, what was your feelings and what's going on in Florida? And then Isaac will get to you and see what you got going on. Um. Well, first down in Florida, it's pretty uh much the same thing. Uh, kind of actually lighter than uh what the media will portray for um especially. For it to be down here in Florida, as you would say, a red state out of the colors, um, it's pretty light down here as far as the protests from what you would see on the media from other cities and um, this, that, and the third. But the thing I was trying to touch on with as far as everything is um, I believe it's just uh, a lot of confusion, which causes the discussion, one, uh, which we're having right now. Uh, I just don't think a lot of people understand um, the hurt and the trauma, you know, the disgust, the discourage that those people are actually going through this down there because, for one, we're not down there. I don't think anyone pretty much that was on here actually physically went down to any one of those protests and was one, two feet, two inches, six inches away from the police and the tear gas and everything like that. So we pretty much have an outside uh, perspective of what's going on and we tend to see that and say, you know, it's acting out. Why Why would you go, you know, loop? Why would you go tear up your own neighborhood? Um, for one, it's proximity. That, that, that's, the, that, that's the first case we're going to talk about is just geographically it's the closest thing to us. Um, and for two, it's just the um, lack of knowledge. It's the same thing that a student would go through, whether it be college or high school, uh, down to a child. When you're learning and it gets frustrating and everything, you know, uh, hits the fan, you tend to lash out. You know, you tend to go out, and I believe that's just what's going on um, right now with, with all the protests and everything. It's, it's a lot of lashing out. Of course, it's a lot of behind factors, um, you know, uh, what, whatever you want to call it. If they want to call them secret agents, you know, you, you see the things out there, but it's a lot of hurt. Um, it's a lot of disgust for the people that we are shown and taught to respect as a kid growing up, and you know to see it as a as a as a grown up as an adult and to have children, you know, it's kind of hurtful to say, you know, dang, at at nine, ten, eleven years old, I got to actually have a conversation, maybe even before I have the sexual conversation with my child, um, a conversation about coming home alive with my child for, you know, for no apparent reason. Got you. Uh, Emma, mm. you still on the line? Yes. Did I cut you off? Yes, I am. No, no, you're, you're fine. I was just basically talking about how everything is moving in waves from downtown. I mean, they, they live at the Macy's downtown mm -hmm. here in Chicago and kind of just moved all the way up so far to the areas adjacent to the city. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're under curfew until 6 a.m. No, no transportation as far as buses and trains go to try to keep people from out there. Yeah, I heard it was a, um, I think it was a, a Bank of America or one of those banks in Chicago that they said they they ran through. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they worked at the bank. I forget what bank it was, and they said they sh well they was yeah, the security they, they the security for the bank, and they said their shift was today, 
but yesterday they, you know, they were saying that it, it, they went in there and uh, got crazy. Um, yeah, Fifth was, Third Bank downtown. Fifth Third Bank. Okay, we got those down here. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Did, so it's the, the protesting and everything, or the protesting riots, whatever you want to call it. The biggest thing is just what's so inflammatory is this this group that basically hijacked the whole point of this mm -hmm. and the stuff that they're out there doing, inciting all the violence, the fires, the, the, the anger. Something needs to be done about them because now the message is totally lost. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a nice uh, handful of people online. So I'm, I mean, online, uh, Actually, online watching and uh, on the on the phone. So, I guess I'll start with the um, um, let's uh, let's let's start uh, uh, unless anybody else wanted uh, Deron, uh, uh, Tamia, Emma, or Tracy. Uh, that's who we got left on the line. If y'all wanted to say anything else before we start, uh, just breaking down a couple things and uh, trying to figure out some stuff. If y'all had anything else to add. I want to just say, you well, know, they really did do a, well, they did do another autopsy, and so they did deem it as asphyxiation due to pressure. Um, the sad part is um, Hennepin County didn't do what they were supposed to do, and they, um, the belief is that they are trying to sweep it under the rug. So, so we'll see what happens. And who was that that was about to say something? I I, I think y'all mics hit at the same time. <laughs> that was me. I was just saying, great great job with the show. Oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, uh, every Monday, nine o'clock. Um, we got a couple interviews lined up for this month. Today I just wanted uh with everything going on and it was kinda it's kinda crazy out there. I just wanted to take some time and see what everybody that uh tunes in thought and how they were feeling. Got a couple more people that uh started watching. Star, thanks for stopping in. Uh Gemini Isaac. Love. Hey Isaac, thanks for stopping in. Give me one second, I'll be right with you. And Jeremiah Jeremiah Brown, thanks for stopping in. Um uh, again, uh, Emma, thanks for uh, that uh, words of uh, kindness. And uh, Isaac, uh, what what what's your feeling on the on the topic right now? Before we get into the question, and before I get to asking you guys specific stuff. Okay, hi everybody. Um, Ray, uh, my thoughts on what's happening is. Uh, one of the callers had called in earlier and um, said something that was very profound. And uh, he said something to the fact of um, trying to make an example out of this big guy. Mm. And and I kind of digested it and I said, I had really actually never thought about it like that. But... Um, it's a valid point. Um, and as to watch this atrocious crime being committed in front of our eyes and watching a grown man, I mean, begging for his life, uh, it, it just makes you tear up, you know, and, and, and 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 I just couldn't I just couldn't believe it. I mean, you just can't believe it. And with no remorse or none whatsoever, it, it it was actually ridiculous. I mean, it's it's you, you, it's incredible. You just can't understand how that should happen. And as to the mode of uh, protesting, I feel like. This is my opinion on it, and, and this was absolutely subjective. I feel like we have tried every mode of protest and actually have not succeeded in getting the kind of results that we want. 
as a people. And I feel like if these millennials have another mold, I'm not condoning violence and I'm not condoning a, a businesses and whatnot. But by the same token, I am not condemning it either. Um, and that's just how I feel about it. I just want to sit and, and watch how things are going to unfold and, and, and how it's going to um, turn out to get our voices really heard. Because this is, this is the time. We cannot wait any longer, you know? Um, this has been going on for way too long for us to uh, just turn a blind eye to it. We see, how many times have we seen this happen? And two weeks later, it's just swept under the rug like it never happened. So uh, if we got the opportunity and, and this millennials have their mode of protesting, um, let's see how far this is going to go and see how uh, how much attention this is going to get and how much results we're going to get out of this. Mm-hmm. And this is my opinion, you know, mm-hmm. if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, yeah. Who was that? Somebody was about to say something? Uh, Tracy here down in Florida to just kind of touch bases on him and kind of ask a question of whether or not everybody just listening and um, thinks it's bad to, uh, you know, to condone the actual, you know, violence and rioting that's going on. I kind of wanted to, you know, actually speak to someone on that side of it because, uh, you know, like uh, Brother Isaac said, not to say that, you know, I'm necessarily condoning it, but I'm not condemning it either on the same side. Uh, What do we do when we know that to lead to peace, you know, you have to get through war? And that's not saying I'm telling everybody, you know, to go outside and start shooting everybody starting a war. But at what point do we actually start the process of the war to lead to the peace and saying, you know, condoning and condemning the violence and the riots that's going on. I, I, I think that's on a, um, in, in my opinion, we don't have a, a common, we don't have a collective goal. Um, depending on what your class is, depending on, uh, who you are in America as an African American. Um, we, we all don't have the same goals. And if you hear, if you, if you listen to the different people that's getting interviewed and you looking on Facebook, um, uh, the different comments and the different uh, social media outlets, a lot of people don't have the same goal. Um, some people are, uh, you know, I've seen friends that's been uh, that's been friends forever arguing over their position in the situation of the struggle. Um, some people think that it's uh, let me turn my I'm sorry. Some people think that uh, you know, we should be doing something else other than um, rioting. Some people think we should be rioting, and they're they're arguing over it. So that's just one case. Just think of the people that think uh, different morally or uh, or religious based or some people are just tired. Um, so that's a, in my opinion, I think that's a fight within itself. So we don't have a collective goal. Um, and then, uh, like em, like Emma said earlier, it's been it's been compromised and co op right now. A lot of the stuff that's going on ain't got nothing to do with what we what what the youth. Because that's who has the energy right now, and that's who's out there front line. The youth, um, they they they're getting co-opted, and it has nothing to do with, with what they're what they're trying to express right now. A lot of the stuff, um, the news is painting a, a different picture, but they always painted a different picture all the way back when uh, Bush was the first Bush was running with the uh, Willie Horton, and they made Willie Horton. Uh, the black face, uh, the face of crime, the face of uh, brute thug, and that's what America as a whole has in their mind. That 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 tone, that that color tone, that skin tone, that face is the enemy. So when you have the media pushing that all the way, and that was in the nineties, right? Eighty. When was uh, the first Bush? 
when was that? Eighty two. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I got my my dates messed up right now. But it's all the way the back. 90s, I want to say that was like ninety two then, right? No, couldn't have been. 92. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Early nineties. Mm-hmm. So if if you if you if you look at all the way back then when you have the media where everybody believed the news, and if you have a president running on a fear factor, this is all the way thirty years ago, and it, and it already had a history. The common person that probably don't even have no issues uh, with our culture, they see the news and they automatically think that's who that's that's who I should fear. So it, it's it's a lot more than people just calling this a, a, a Trump America. America been like this. They just turned on the lights. Can I can I ask a question? Which I'm pretty sure people have probably noticed. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I feel like. Right now, everybody, public figure-wise, political, um, law enforcement, everybody now all of a sudden has the same thought pattern. Everybody is speaking out about racism and it not being tolerated and brutality and things of this nature. But I haven't heard one person speak up before this happened. And to me, it seems like it's just a trend. Everybody is, is speaking on one accord because this is happening right now. But then two or three weeks from later, or later from now, you're not going to hear anything again. Everybody will be turning a blind eye again. Or is it really sincere? Like, Tamir, your mayor in Minneapolis shocked me with a lot of the stuff that he was saying. But Minneapolis, I went to college there. It's a very racist place. And I'm just, I was shocked to hear some of the stuff that he said that seemed to be so real. So is this real, or are people just jumping on the bandwagon? This, this sentiment, is everybody really feeling the way they say they are right now? I, I Actually, I, well, had, I had that in one of my notes. I'm sorry, I didn't want to talk over whoever was coming in. Go ahead. No, for, for him, I have personally um, seen him... Um, in the community, like, I won't, I don't want to say in the community because I'll be lying, but he, the Minneapolis mayor and the St. Paul mayor, the St. Paul mayor is black, first of all, and they were elected around the same time. Um, I think for Mayor Frey, um, he knew that if there was no conviction that this would be the end result. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like he was trying to just uh, make sure that everything was done correctly. Um, does he genuinely feel like that? Sometimes I, 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 I mean, I feel like he did, and he do. Um, I just feel like we we do, I mean, if we're going to talk about racism, we do have to be on one accord. There are a lot of people that are on, you know, one accord when it comes to this, and some of them are not. And um, um, some of them are just, agi- like, just like with the protest, agitators. Um, but I really genuinely feel as if Mayor Frey is one of those people who is tired of seeing seeing it happen over and over again. Um, I just um, I just hope for change, not just here but everywhere because you know it's it's sad. You know I can't even count how many times Minnesota in itself has has been hit and the cases have been publicized and they get off, you know, Mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't familiar. I mean, it wasn't close to us until it actually started happening. And I'm, I'm, I shouldn't say start happening, but we realized and recognized that it was not just happening 
in uh, Trayvon Martin's community or Eric Garner's community. It was happen. It's now. It's actually happening in Minnesota. It's actually happening in Milwaukee. Nobody is saying anything. You know, nobody is speaking up. I would like. But I think that. I think there are um, people people that are genuinely um, genuinely genuinely on board and tired of the of the the racism, genuinely. So. So this is just their chance to finally speak up. I'm sorry, say that again. So this is just their chance to finally say something. I think it's. I think they finally are standing up. There are. Um, there are um, white Americans who are in Minnesota that are standing up, pastors and um, uh, other leaders. But I, I, I'm like not to, quite I like sure to interject into I is. like to interject into that one because that's that's one of the points I wanted to um, I wanted to state. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, Am no, no problem. Heavy? No, no problem. No, 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 no. You you did what you were supposed to do, but I just disagree with. Um, with people just coming into being awoke, if they was coming into being awoke, they're the ones that what they're the ones that write legislation, and ain't nobody wrote no legislation to change what's happening. So, for all the cele- right. all the celebrities that's having lunch ins when they you know when they want to do business, they go sit down and they lobby for that business that they trying to get out. Whether if they sitting down with different mayors, it's a lot of celebrities, it's a lot of athletes with keys to the city all kinds of connections to make change. But that when it's business, you know, they sit down with these people. When it's, when it's, when it's about making a change for the community, they, 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 they push uh, what we got going on now. And to me, I, and I, I don't know what's in nobody's heart, so this is just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um. Like I said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to judge nobody, but from from the person outside looking in that don't have those connections to sit down with a uh, with a senator or a mayor at any time, it, it, I mean, it, it kind of looked like a photo op to me. It, it kind of looked like let me okay. ride this wave. In my in my opinion, uh, and and any okay. of you can, uh, Duran, uh, Emma, or Isaac, you can speak to that. But a lot of them, if before this happened, before. Uh, before even um, um, I can't think of his Aubrey situation. There's been if you if you watch Vlad, if you watch these different shows, how they saying they sitting down and they talking about you know coming up with this business or getting uh, sitting down with uh, the administration for opportunity zones and different things. When it's business, they can sit down with these legislators. But when it's about change, it's okay. Let me let me let me put this T-shirt on. Let me make this uh, uh, this rap song, or let me. And and I, like again, that's just my opinion. I, I only can go by what I see. Uh, Isaac, uh, Emma, Tamia, or Duran, do you have anything towards that? Yeah, I, I just feel like I'm sorry. Emma, go ahead. You the lady, Duran. Uh, He's a polite guy. Yeah, I, just, I, <laughs> I appreciate the support if it's genuine, but even with the Aubrey case, people were still turning their heads and they weren't saying anything. Mm. You know, I, I work with social media and I look at a lot of feeds and there's a lot of people who ignore what's going on right around them on purpose, like it doesn't exist. And now those same exact people are being vocal and they've had ample enough time to speak out on other instances and they haven't said a word. Mm-hmm. So I just wonder, is it just a trend or is it genuine? Right. Because why would they wait till the shit hit the fan? Because, uh, and uh, Duran, I know, well, Duran, go ahead and then I'll follow up with that. Uh, what, what, what did you have on that? I guess for, for me, it's kind of two things. Because I know for me, myself, like I said before, out of all the ones that I saw happen, this is the one that really, really affected me. The other ones, they were terrible. And I felt bad on a bunch of them. But the, this one, it was just so much different because you could see it happening. It was live. It was like live and direct murder. And you had people, like, trying to help, 
you had an officer standing there watching. Like, this was kind of different, for me at least. And that might have been the same for other people because this one was so personal, and I think that's why the outrage came because I don't, I can't remember all these cities doing what they're doing right now, burning stuff and just going nuts. I don't remember all these cities. I remember it would be one or two maybe. But, like, this is – I've heard it was worldwide. I didn't really see – I don't really watch the news like that, but from what I've seen – it's a lot going on. That's that's one point. And then my other point is sometimes, man, um, you, you're you good at what you're good at. Like if you're an entertainer, you're, you're a basketball player, you're good at knowing how to sit down and negotiate a contract about basketball. You And sometimes politics and stuff like that is difficult. Even me, myself, two things I don't discuss is religion and politics because that can get – Real ugly, real quick, and depending on what you're doing. I have a clothing line. So I might have some supporters that's like, man, we feeling that, we want to buy that, we want to do this, that, and the other. Religion and politics can change somebody's views in a heated conversation, and now you lose business. And I've been told that once before by multiple people that are pretty skilled in business, like, Deron, you need to separate yourself from your brand because – once you start feeling X, Y, and Z, your company can take a hit X, Y, and Z. And you know me. You, you know me. I, I can care less. But for those that do feel like I have a little something or I have a little entitlement or I have a little position, a lot of them are scared to lose that because we can't act like we ain't been blackballed before. I don't know if everybody they, – they showed all this Michael Jordan greatness and the 10 series, but they forgot about Craig Hodges and how he got blackballed. I don't know if everybody remember that, but I think he spoke up on some civil rights type stuff or some Muslim stuff. Somebody can correct me. For, don't quote me on exactly what I'm saying, but yeah, I, I guarantee he got blackballed something that he stood up for. Him. And it was like everybody else looking at him like, what are you doing? And uh, El Amin, I can't or, think of his Tim first Hardaway. name. I'm not saying Tim Hardaway was right, but when Tim Hardaway came out with, hey, I don't want my son being gay type thing, they blackballed him on that too. So it's like when, sometimes when you stand up for what is right or what you believe in, you get blackballed and you take a hit financially, and some people aren't built for that. Mm. Um, I have a question that just popped in my mind. Sorry, you didn't mean to. Yeah, go ahead. Anything. But now, do you think um, white people owe Colin Kaepernick an apology? I don't. Or do you do you I think don't. that they see? Do they do they the things that they didn't want to see? Do they finally see it now? I don't think it. I think it's a, a it's a and I don't know. Again, I'm looking at um, even with, even with um, everybody that's uh, that's white. Let's talk about that. Let's just get the elephant out the room. Uh, the white people that's supporting it right now. Yeah. Again, where is it when it's legislation time? When it's legislation time, everybody, every every ethnic group, they fend for themselves, and rightfully so. I'm not saying uh, you're not supposed to vote for what you want, for what you see your uh, the life that you want to be. But this right here, this has been going on since Rodney King. And actually further than that, but as far as when I start you know, coming of age and noticing stuff and seeing what the world is about. This has been going on since then, and that was 91. So mm-hmm. it, 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 it's in, in Donahue. Donahue was big. Uh, Sally Jesse Raphael was big at the time, and they had a lot of, uh, lot of conversations on, on TV uh, back in the 90s, the early 90s, uh, where, where the platforms was, everybody's, Donahue, was big. Sally Jesse Raphael was big, and it was another dude that didn't last that long. And then it was uh, um, what's the uh, Hispanic guy? Uh, Geraldo. Geraldo. So they they had they had a platform discussing this in the, in the early nineties. This is two thousand and twenty, and no legislation has been passed besides the crime bill, uh, which uh, 
your boy uh, pushed. Um, give me one second. Uh, 414, we just got a new call in. Uh, what's your name? Uh, where you from? And uh, could you turn your background uh, down? Let me turn the TV down. Uh, Kevin Highshaw, Washington High School, class of 98. Okay, what's going on, man? <laughs> man, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, Shouts out to my man, Ray Ray. Uh, you know, we going through a lot in this country right now, man. And I and I got kids and I got daughters that, that that's questioning me about why things are not fair. And I, I don't have a I don't have an explanation for them. I remember me, Ray Ray, uh, Dre Hicks, uh, Big Rob, uh, you know, sitting sitting at the lunch table talking about the things that's happening right now. All I wanted to, wanted to say is I, I wanted to reach out to my man, Ray Ray, and let him know that I'm proud of what he's doing um, and that, you know, we, we'll chop it up later on the back end. But I, I just wanted to uh, just share my voice, man, because I don't condone the violence that's going on, but, I mean, what, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do if they don't listen to us? That's, my, that's the only point I wanted to make today on this platform. Again, Ray Ray, I appreciate you. You know I love you. I appreciate that. And we're talking later, man. Yeah, I, I got, appreciate that, man. I got your number, and I'll, I'll give you a call. I'll lock you in, and I'll give you a call uh, uh, sometime this week. Yep. yep. Sounds good. I appreciate good you, night. brother. Yes, sir. Right. Emma, yep. uh, Emma, back to uh, what you were saying. Um. Mm-hmm. Did did anybody have a a, a follow up to what Emma was saying? We still got Isaac Duran and Tanae on the phone. I don't think she was finished though. Sorry, well, Ray, you you were you were explaining, and I mean, basically, what you were saying supports my question of is this a trend? Like you said, they the same people with the back in the day they were aware I just of what was happening, but I, nobody. I just I think don't. It's a trend. It is a trend because if you look at everybody, even with the stimulus pack, the stimulus package, you know what I mean. When every, now everybody, everybody in uh, was talking about black excellence, and everybody was business and all of that. When they was putting this to this stimulus package together, all these other companies was lobbying for that money. Where was our representation within that? And that's why we didn't get. As, that's why 90% of the small black businesses didn't get a piece of that money. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. even with, uh, with the uh, John Stewart, which I, I really appreciated him for doing this, and it taught me a lot, and this was years ago. John Stewart, uh, he was lobbying for the 911, um, uh, the 911 first responders to 9/11. get re- yeah, 911 responders to get relief. And he caught hell mm-hmm. for that, but he did what he needed to do, and he got them a pack, he got them legislation in. If people want the the it to really change, they're not gonna be. It's not about getting uh uh getting money from the people that don't have money. It's not about uh mm-hmm. photo ops. It's not about, and this is just my opinion and what I see. But somebody might be in the inside, and they might see it a different way. But from what from where I'm standing. The way you get change is to lobby. Martin Luther King said it said in the White House. That was that was lobbying. And that's that's where that 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 uh civil right came uh, that came into play. That sit down with the people that write legislation. We angry we angry at the people that don't predict public policy. That couldn't help us if they wanted to. We angry at them, but we not we're we're not sitting. We we just had uh it was something that I I, I think uh dang it I I screenshotted it but I didn't put it up. Um, it was talking about how uh the the Urban Black League and the uh the National Black Caucus and the uh, NAACP didn't want to sit with Trump because of a photo op. But in that same voice in November, they wasn't on the steps for the uh, Civil Rights Act of 19, I mean 1866 when uh, Byron Allen was fighting for that. 
But they was the day before they was at the court steps for DACA. Everybody pushing that, and and I'm not saying that uh, Hispanics don't need legislation, but at the same time, where was the people that speak for us when we needed to be spoken for? So that kind of that kind of wraps like around what? around to what you were saying, Emma. Like it's it's a game when it's about business. Everybody is they lobbying mm-hmm. for what they need. They sitting down. They having lunches, mm-hmm. but when it's true. When it's uh, when it's true uh, legislation to change to actually start changing, and that's why I named this 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 episode "Transformer the Government." And I wanted to get into that because that's what we need. That's what we need, and it's it's the people that have the voice that can sit down and have these lunches and go play golf with people. Um, that it. When it's business, like I said, is when it's about capitalism, they they own it. But when it's about actually uh, giving real people a voice, Scott. it ain't there. Um, we got a new caller that just yeah. came in. Four zero four. What's your name? Where you calling from? This is Scott from hey, Southern you know? California. Hey, what's going on, Scott? What's going on? How can I help you, brother? Hey, what's up, Jeff? You, uh, what was your feeling on the topic that we're talking about? You... Well, well, I ain't gonna lie. I stepped away, so I'm trying to see catch up with what's going on. What are we discussing right now? Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so what right now? Uh, Emma brought up a valid point. Is basically, uh, Emma, you want you want you can go ahead and uh, and 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 put that out there like you. What you said is exactly. well. My question was just basically. I feel like in the current events right now, a lot of the white people that are being vocal, they're just being vocal because it's a thing, a trend for the moment now. But are they sincere? Will they be sincere two weeks later? Well, my opinion on that is, is, and I'll be honest with you, and I kind of feel you on that, everybody seems to have done an about face very fast. And what I genuinely believe in what's going on is it's multiple aspects, depending on who you're dealing with. Some of the people, I believe, are just terrified. This is straight chaos in multiple cities, and it's scaring the hell out of white people. And let's just be honest. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of them are actually having conversations now because they want us to kind of dial back some of that energy we have going. So that's what I believe some of these white people are doing. Um, I think any time you get a law enforcement to actually do their job recently, well, I ain't going to say recently, period, in this country, a lot of the time I think that generally has to do with leverage. I think I heard Ray say something about leverage with that. Politics is about leverage. And right now, when you set a city on fire, that's some leverage. Uh, People want this to stop. And I think that they're willing to say and do anything to get that done. So that's my opinion. I don't think it's genuine because it's too fast. Um, It's this is not the first murder that we've seen by police officers. Yeah, that's correct. So that that's where my question comes from. I've, I've never heard anybody else be that vocal until now, and yeah. it just seems like a trend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. But and and, and if I, can, I wanted to uh, interject with uh, Michelle. I can't who, command, Ray. I'm sorry. Go yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ivy, Isaac. Yeah, I, I I just wanted to say something real quick, uh, and and I try. I'm not a, a a religious person, but I'm a spiritual person, and, and I use uh, uh, the Bible as my guidance. Uh, and if we if we look at uh, what the scripture says about the devil, I mean, we see that he's very crafty, you know, and. and and he has so many tricks that he uses. And uh, even in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus has said that he's, he's a murderer from the beginning. Um, mm. And so we know what he does. I mean, his tricks work all the time. So he uses the same tricks. Like, And so we have to figure out a way to disrupt it those tricks and 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 we as a people have to realize and be conscious of the fact that um the old tricks always work 
and they're going to keep using their old tricks because uh, we keep staying in that status quo. So it's time for um, the, the millennials. We don't have any leader right now, in my opinion, in terms of our community. Um, and so these millennials are coming up with different ways of disrupting this and getting attention and sustaining that attention. And I think it's something that we need to um, sort of um, think about, you know, we, we, we want to think about that and see how they're going to unfold. Cause we didn't, we've never really had this kind of tension in, in a long while. So how do we keep this flame and this fire burning to where something is done about this? Uh, that's well, another if question, I can, so. if I can, and then I want to interject. Yeah, I'll think... go ahead, go ahead Ramsa. I think the energy is the same with uh, Trayvon Martin, and and, and I remember uh, uh, you went down uh, and when we had the th- the protesting in Atlanta uh, the second day, right? And and right. and I went the first day. Uh, I remember um, it's, it's the same in it's the same energy. It's just that uh, uh, we we have a. a um, I, I don't even want to. I don't even know. But how right, to well, I call think it. I think it's the same energy, but the attention, uh, in my opinion, is uh, and I respectfully disagree with you that we get more attention now due it's, to the fact that people are staying home, watching TV more because of the COVID, um, and so they don't have a choice but to look at what's on TV. And so I think um, their awareness is a little bit up a notch, if I should say. <sighs> I would say it's an it's an election. I, I, go, oh, go I, I, I don't think the tension. I, I think this is definitely higher from what I based off the map right. you just pulled up with all those dots. I, I remember in Milwaukee when when Trayvon when that happened. I remember people being super pissed. I don't remember one police station getting burned. One that I haven't seen. I haven't. I have never seen this type of energy myself. Myself. I. I I like I, I seen with, with Rodney King. I seen it happen like in L.A. It happened there, and it might have happened down south, but like up north, I, I haven't, I haven't witnessed that. Not we, on this magnitude. We have we have to go in a. Uh, we have to put the accountability on social media as well, and the attention Absolutely. the attention that the media the media is giving it. That's that's my stamp. Like. The media is like really pushing this, and um, it's it's kind of forcing the hands of Democrats to like say, "Hey, let's go with Biden." You know what I mean? And I, I wanted to just uh, say what uh, Michelle said in the chat: uh, the first start to change is to get Trump out of office. Um, and my uh, comment to that would be, yes, but at what cost? Like if can I ask a question? Who is that? And uh, go ahead. This is this is Scott. I just got one question about Trump. And again, this is nothing. This is not coming from a person who deals with the Republican or the Democratic Party. So I'm I'm, I'm really neutral when it comes to this. But my issues with I, I think I have when Black people talk about removing Trump out of office is. Did your life really get worse under him than it was under Obama, under the Bushes, under the Reagan, under the first Bush, under Carter? Our lives, we're generally in the same pocket at all times in our community. Now, is he rude? Yes. Is he overt? Yes. But I actually prefer that because I like to know who my enemy is. So I look at yes. people like Obama. Obama came at you generally like he was your friend. But I lean towards, if we're going to deal with politics, we have to lean towards policy. And Obama did no policy for black people, specifically. So when we say let's remove Trump out of office is the first thing. Okay, we put Biden in place, and Biden has the exact same identical record as Donald Trump does. And I don't understand why do we think that we're going to move positively. We've been dealing with different politics on both sides of the fence since, the, since we've been here. I mean, since, since 1865. I don't understand that. Somebody has to make me understand what makes him worse in the last four years than we did the last eight, those, those, those last eight under Obama or those last eight under Bush. Can somebody tell me where black people changed? Their lives got worse. I can't see it. Anybody want to uh, touch that? 
I I, I can't say it got I can't say it got better or worse. I mean, but that's we still that's my point. We still dealing with racism. We still dealing with a whole bunch of other issues. I like we to still touch dealing on. with wars. When so you, I'm not quite sure. When you look at like even with this stimulus package and uh, the bailout of the banks um, of 2008, it's all a transfer of wealth. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. it, it's just a transfer of wealth to people that already got money. Did y'all hear how much money billionaires made in the last um, last two months? <laughs> right. Oh yeah. So I'm um, still making. Mm. Just saying. That's a good one. It is. I mean, it's a, that's all just, it is. Is it ever since uh, uh, uh what is that law? Uh, I can't think. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, once I think of it. Now, I, what I was gonna say is, is that I think for us, if it was my opinion, this is like it's an opinion based. This is not factual. My opinion. We have to get to a point to where we are the proactive group, and not the reactive group. We are very reactive to everyone else. We'll hear, well, politicians are going into Congress and they're going to make some rules. Well, we're listening to hear how we're going to have to adjust. We have to get to a point to where we're not just adjusting and get to a point where we're actually leading the way. I listened to attorney Alton Maddox years ago, and he made a very good point. He was talking to some youth, which I, I agree with talking to the youth. And he said, if you're not planning for yourself, someone is planning for you. And they're always planning for us. And I would tell anyone right now, we're not the ones massively the ones that are rioting, if you're paying attention to social media, not the news. The news will always slant it towards making black people look bad. It is we're not the ones that's actually the main ones rioting. I'm not saying we're not doing it at all. But what I am saying is, is that we've got, we've got to look at it more and basically say, how do we plan on making the next step? And not worrying about what, and, and then too, and the last thing I'll say, and we have to start looking at it in a way to understand that any progress for us is going to upset white people. And we're going to have to understand that. There's no way possible for us to come up without them getting upset because for us to come up takes from them. And so that's the problem that we have to understand. Black people want to, at this point, seem like we want everyone to be okay with us coming up. It's just not going to happen that way. You're going to have to understand that. And see, like for me, I don't pay attention to what other people have to say. I just literally move the way that I'm going to move and understand that if you're upset, you're just upset, but you're going to have to deal with it. That's what we have to get to. Stop asking for them. Stop trying to have conversations with them about how to make things better. Cause all they're doing is the wasting energy. That's what they're doing. They're dissipating the energy when it comes to that. That's what I want to say. You know what? I was just uh, thinking about an incident that happened with me at work and everything you saying, I'm just like, wow. Um, and it's because I actually do work with, I'm not sure if it was a racist attack or if it was a professional attack. But either way it go, I felt some kind of way. And mm. I felt like Michelle. every time I would say something about it, um, Michelle. I was made to feel like oh, what I was oh. saying was just, basically miscommunication and at some point I was just like, no, this cannot be miscommunication and if people can sit up and say things to me and then don't expect me to say anything and then, you know, at the same token, I do, like you said, have to be uh careful of my reactions. Mm-hmm. Um so that's just I mean, that point right there is just so valid in so many different ways. You know We got um I'm sorry, go ahead. Just being aware of people are going to be upset when you make a move. We got a new you caller know, just in. Just do it and keep going. 305, I <coughs> believe that is Michelle, the tag team duo. Yes, this is Michelle. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Not too much trying to stay, trying to stay up. What was your comment? Yeah, so I was. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, was somebody else saying something? Uh, uh-uh, that was. I was just trying to introduce you. Go, go ahead. 
Oh, okay. So I just wanted to respond to the gentleman and say, how has your life changed? Like, I want to say, how has his life changed for the better since Trump has been in office? The kind of thing to me that makes uh, Trump, you know, him being the racist man that he is, he makes it so that these people feel okay to look at all these people telling them to stop, to get off his neck, and he's looking them right in the eye. He's giving everybody the okay to do that. That's how, why we have seen so many more of these since he's been in office. Can I respond? Yeah, we, we, we're still yeah. open conversation. Okay. Well, like I say, my only way of looking at that is is that they've always felt this way. All they're doing is, is that basically, again, it sounds like what we're saying is, is that we want – it's like almost having an, a reason. And I, like I say, I still feel like when it comes to Trump, they, people who feel emboldened by Trump always have felt that way. The only difference is, is that they basically, it's like right now what's going on with the protest. So I heard someone say with the protest, it felt like, you know, it's getting worse. It's not that it's so much it's getting worse, it's that they're, this culture, they're feeding off of each other. So if you're out in the public, if I'm out with my friends and I'm 19 years old and somebody doing some reckless, I'm going to get reckless. So they're feeding off of each other. That's just my whole opinion when it comes to it. So it's not so much as that uh, I'm with Trump or against Trump. My main thing is I just want us to make our own route and stop worrying about what they're doing. I don't care what Trump is doing. I don't care what his people do. The people who love him, my thing is I have to worry about how I respond to them, not so much how they already feel about me, if that makes sense. I, I kind of have an opinion on that, too. I kind of side with that um, because, I like like he said, I like to know who my enemy is. There's two kind of racists, in my opinion. There is the ones who hide it, and they, they feel a certain way, but they hide it, and there's the ones that show it. Definitely. And that's the one thing that I do yeah, respect the about the and he shows it. Like, I need to see that. I, I'd rather know who my enemy is versus pat me on the back. Because when I worked in the corporate America, I found out that some people really didn't like me, and it was probably racism. But I would prefer to know up front, like, you know, I don't like you. So that's the one. The one that's any good in Trump, that's the good that I is the fact we can, he displays it. I also um, would prefer to see it in my face until it's affecting the lives of others. So when you're the leader of this country and you're making it known that you support this type of foolishness and you're not even going to comment on it, things like that, that just incites and it instigates and it just makes people feel like they, they can go out and do this and get away with it. And right, that's the I'll say this. that I have with Trump. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm with you. I'm not a Trump fan at all, and I think he's an asshole, and that's just my personal opinion. And I think that, but I've always known that. I caught him way back when he used to do the, the whole little reality show. He's not a nice person. If you go back further than that, if you want to talk about Central Park Five, you knew what you were getting. So my point is to people is if you go back four years ago, if majority of the country didn't feel this way already, how did he get in office in the first place? Hmm. Well, we didn't vote. Okay, we didn't vote. I love that. Okay, so we didn't vote. Why didn't we vote? Most people didn't come out to vote this time. It's because people are starting to finally realize and get politically educated that we're not getting quid pro quo when they, we, we're like everyone else is doing. So that's why we didn't come out. And then, two, being that we don't have income in our community to have lobbyists to basically pay off politicians, say like a Claude Anderson talks about uh, – we basically have to lobby what we have. And the only thing that you had politically is your vote. So for me, I know we go back and forth versus down, 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 excuse me, down ballot versus not voting versus voting to get Trump out of office. My main thing is just like this. It's always leverage. So my thing, if there's no other way to get leverage, if you don't have any money in this country, involved in this politics, and the reason I feel like your vote needs to be hijacked until someone gives you something tangible. The very reason, like you said, for Trump. Trump got in office, everybody's upset now. Well, if they had just did their job in 2016, Trump wouldn't have been in office, and they're still doing the exact same thing today, the Democrats are. 
that basically said, I'm not going to deal with you, but come out and vote for me anyway. It's going to have to be some consequences. And the last thing I'll say to it, you're right. A well, lot of people are getting. It's going to be more death. It's going to be more um, right. foolishness. It's going to be more things that well, are going on. Are well, we willing to sacrifice that just to say I think we, that we don't want, we want, we want to keep this fool in office? I think we should be ready for it. Because I'm going to tell you right now where we're at. They have been at war with us since this country's inception. And we have to understand the difference between war and warfare. See, we think of war as guns, fighting, killing, shooting. That's not. Warfare is literally trying to have to basically subjugate a group of people without even having to uh, engage in fisticuffs. And so they've been doing it with us for so long. And what we're getting to now, this youth now is saying we cannot sit back and let these people beat us anymore. And so what's going to happen is when you're at war, casualties are going to happen. I would always employ people for people to go study the Haitian Revolution. I always talk about that. It is because the Haitian Revolution, yes, bloodshed has to happen with these people because they don't understand anything other than that. And, and, and I would always... Em- well, it's going to be bloodshed on both sides. But what's going to... The outcome will come. It's just like anything else. If you can tell me any point in history where there was not bloodshed, but there was a transfer of any power, I'm with you, I'll do that. But I've, I study history. I've never seen where there's been a transfer of power without there being any type of bloodshed, or at least some type of You're economic. Right, but it's, it's all of us that's dying, though. That's what I'm saying. But we're the only ones so, dying because we was, up until recently, point. we never fought back. That's the problem. We was been living off this monster king, civil rights, let them beat us, we're going to be passive and docile. And see, I'm going to be honest with you, when I, was, when I was a child, my parents told me, if somebody put their hands on me, then you hit them back. But then for some reason when we deal with white society, we disregard that all of a sudden. People don't want to fight every day. That's the one thing my father told me about bullies. They don't want to fight every day. They like picking on you because you're willing to take it. And see, right now, they're not taking it. And I, best, I, I can honestly say out of this, the one thing that may come from this, because I don't believe this is going to change our situations yet, but I do think it's a spark. I think the one thing that will help is the fact of some people have gotten busted in the face now. And since they got hit in the face, they're not going to be so quick to go out and hit people anymore. Cops have been basically wreaking havoc on us because we have not fought back. And now that people are fighting back, you're starting to see police officers run. You're starting to see them hesitate. You're starting to see that nobody's getting choked out and shot. It's because nobody wants to get hurt. That's the reason why I would say, but bloodshed is not going to, you're not going to get around that in this environment. I can't see it. They have been dogging us for 400 years. I cannot see this thing ever happen because they're not going to change their mindset. We can wish it, hope it, want it, but they're not going to change their mindset. They're not ignorant. They know what they're doing. They created this system. Hmm. Well, I, I just, I just you know think on this. What you say, Michelle? No, go ahead. Somebody was... Uh... I was just going to say, I was going to say, too, I mean, if you think about it, in retrospect, um, they are be they're they're fighting because now when they had the majority now they're they're becoming a minority as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always been a minority. Trying, no, I'm saying they are becoming now the minority. That's what I'm saying, because, I, and, I, and and not and not to cut you off, but that's the one thing. See, the two differences between black society and white society is this: white people globally make up eight percent of the population. And what happens is they practice global white supremacy. They think as a global unit. We think compartmentalized. We're Americans. We're Canadians. We're Brazilians. We're Nigerians. We're not the minority. African people are not the minority. We're actually the majority. Us and Asians are the majority in this country. They've made us believe with this whole minority mindset that we're actually a small group. Pan-Africanism would save the world today. The problem is you can't get black people to practice Pan-Africanism. Can I, can I That's say, why I say, and, and not to cut you off of that. Uh, with Pan African, no, no, no. Pan Africanism was killed I'm, when uh, Gaddafi got killed. So, that was, yes, that I was totally it. agree. If not before, it, actually, I think Ray, when Kwame Nkrumah died, that's when the Pan Africanism died. Yeah, but Marcus uh, Garvey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Kwame Nkrumah, when he when they when he died, I think that killed Pan Africanism right along with it. I think uh, Gaddafi was he had a uh, he was putting it back together because he was getting all the African nations to uh, 
to at least sit down and conversate on making um I forget the name of the money over there that they was having. Isaac, I agree. Uh Isaac, what was the name of the uh currency? The gold dinar. Uh, it was dinar, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that was that was gonna be backed by gold. So like real actual money or a resource. And and, and and Ray, I'd like to chime in a quick second, you know, uh and I also wanted to say um uh, something to the fact of we as a people have to start teaching the new generation how to be indignant, you know. Um uh, you know, we we've we've been sitting on the sidelines watching uh for far too long, you know. Um I did a, a podcast on anger, and when people have ways that they express their anger, you know, tantrums, explosions, and all of that stuff. But um, that's the wrong kind of uh, anger. But when it comes to righteous indignation, like what's really going on right now, if you look, in, even in the scriptures, you see uh, when Jesus went into the temple and he saw that people were misrepresenting uh, uh uh, the scriptures, uh, they were t doing bad teachings and selling stuff and gambling and all of that stuff. In the, uh, he got mad and he started turning tables. He got violent, actually. And so at some point, we have to be indignant. We have to be um, firm and, and teach the new generation that, like my brother said, there's got to be a little bit of bloodshed for us to really be liberated as a people, you know. Uh, and there's never been a time, like you said, that that there was a, a huge change or a turnaround of events where blood was not shed. So um, I think we need to just um, sacrifice uh, uh, for our future generations as well. If that and, makes and sense. And how do we do that? How do we sacrifice? We got to be indignant. We have to be indignant. We have to, when we see stuff, we have to call it as is and not fear and, um, and not sit on the sidelines and watch this man get choked and, and, and not fight you know what I mean? And, and put it on video, yeah. you know, we, we have to get in a fight. And, and, and we got to get in there at some point. I agree. I totally agree. Well, I, I agree think that, that. I just, um, I watched all of the debates last year because I'm a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. Everybody think I'm a Trump supporter, but I'm a Democrat. Um, I watched because, you because I'm a, I, I, I look at stuff objectively. We have to we have to um, we have to be truthful, whether our side or whoever side is 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 lying or not, because Pelosi got a lot of stuff that's going on that we don't talk about. AOC got a lot of stuff that got that's going on that we don't talk about. So we have we have to be objective and be real with ourselves if we're going to talk about bringing a change and bringing legislation to our community. That's all. That's my standpoint. And if we're going to give our vote. In my opinion, we should we should be demanding something. Um, I agree, and that's just that's that's my only stand. That's my only stand. Um, we can't demand uh, legislation from uh, a Republican if we didn't vote for him. That's not how voting works. Whoever you vote for, they're gonna support the people they voted for. So how's it in that? He's out of he's out, <laughs> he's out of mind to me in my in in my in my point. So I, like I was saying, I watched all the debates last year, all the way, all the city halls, all everything, and I watched every single city hall. I mean, every single debate when uh, the black vote, the black community came up, they only gave us like thirty seconds of talking points, and it was it was one where uh, the only person that really advocated for us was uh, Mary Will Williamson. That's the only person that advocated for us. Um, mm -hmm. And people just swept that under the bridge and didn't say anything about the community from the NAACP, from the Urban Black League, from um, uh, the National <coughs> Black Caucus. All, none, of them, none of them said anything. We didn't have no write-ups about that within our media, the media that we supposed to control. We didn't we didn't can, say can we say something that Ray? Go ahead. 
can we say, let's just be honest, the Black Caucus, NAACP, these are not groups for us. I know they gave it to us. I know that they set them up for us, and they've been, like, NAACP, I know that's over 100 years old at this point. I understand, but we have to be honest that these groups are not for us. Uh, let's, we have to be honest. Um, I'm hopefully we'll be back in Atlanta very soon, but I remember watching this Keisha Lance Bottoms thing when she was addressing the people about going home the other night. And I already knew, you know, let, let's just be honest. I've never seen her reprimand anyone like she talked to us. And I've seen her post uh, white supremacist death threats, the whole nine. I've never seen it. Uh, what's the lady name who told Snoop that she had an army? Susan Wright, she had an army for him. Where is she at? Now, mm. so you can't be respected as a group if your own group don't even respect itself. And those politicians don't respect their base. And I'm going to tell you, that's the thing that's killing us is that we do not have a base for real. And the people that are supposed to be representing us are not representing us. They're here to keep the power structure in place. It's been like this since we've been out of so-called slavery. The people who actually lobby for us, they kill the exile. That's your Marcus Garvey, that's your Malcolm X's, that's your Martin Luther King's. These are those people. Those are your Khalid Muhammad's, your Dr. Amos Wilson. These are those people. They remove those and they put people in place. Uh, Ray, you brought up Gaddafi. I agree with Gaddafi. The only leader in Africa other than Gaddafi that I have a f- profound respect for was Robert Mugabe oh, yeah. and now Julius Malena out of South Africa. And I would say Julius Malena says the same thing that, that, that Gaddafi says. We need to remove our borders and be one nation. That's what you should be doing. But I think the main thing that's killing our culture is, is that we do believe that we are a second-class citizen uh, subconsciously in our group. And until we get to a point that we understand that we are the original, the original people, meaning that you are the first, meaning that you was, nothing's going to be better than the original. That's the way I look at it. Once we start believing in that, you'll start seeing the change. That's just it. It's true. Uh, just continuing what I was saying, though. <laughs> uh, Sorry about that. I did go on no, the no, 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 no worries. No worries. That was that was welcome. Um, but what, what I was saying about the uh, the the debates last year, um, all the way up until uh, the last, uh, you know, uh, Barry not Barry Sanders, uh, Bernie Sanders and um, uh, Joe Biden. Our our issues was ignored, and then uh, the town hall with the uh, the LGBTQ, uh, we got attacked. So it's like, um, like I said, like Mary uh, Mary Williamson was the only one, uh, like saying we need to make amends with the black community as a nation, and then we can move forward. That was her stance. Um, and right when that cru- that question was um, was presented the first time, y'all girl Kamala Harrison came in and she made it about herself uh, and attacking Biden about uh, the bussing uh, back when she was a kid, which she didn't even have to go through that. But that's a whole nother that's a whole nother story. So what I'm saying is. Uh, the Democrats do not win without our vote. So if everybody is getting every uh, something, the Hispanics is getting DACA, uh, uh, the LGBT community is getting what they need, whatever that is, and everybody else is getting what they need, and we're becoming a bottom cast and our vote count, why wouldn't we ask for something? Whether if we like Joe Biden or not, why wouldn't we demand something? Why would we just say, hey, let's vote for him to get Trump out of office. It don't make sense to me. Mm-mm. It don't make sense to me. If his, if, his legisla- if his policies is almost identical, if you look at the crime bill, everybody say uh, Trump is a racist, which hip-hop... Ain't that worse than the crime bill. Hip-hop didn't believe that in the 90s. Every, every, every <laughs> hip-hop artist was trying to get a picture and, and trying to uh, talk about Trump. Which that don't have nothing about that don't have nothing to do with my viewpoint, but if if everybody was going that route, and then when he come president and and he say stuff that a lot of the times is I don't know if he comprehensive of what he's saying or what, but long story short, the crime bill 
and the person that was his, uh, Joe Biden mentor, we don't look at none of that. We don't look at uh, Storm Thorman of uh, North Carolina. And, and that was his mentor. That was a known, uh, he was a senator in South Carolina, North Carolina, and he was a, a, a known KK member. And he had I'm policy. from North Carolina, Ray. You hit it on the head. Strong Thurman was the biggest racist. So that's that's what I mean. So how can we call the kettle black in this situation? And he and, and Biden and Biden still haven't answered for the crime bill and the, the comments that he made when he presented his crime bill to the Senate. When Char when he had the interview with Charlemagne, he didn't say he Charlemagne asked a direct question and he danced around it. You know what I mean? He he treated Charlemagne, which Charlemagne is not uh nobody to you know you know, if you if you look at the history of his uh uh, uh his conversations as far as uh media, uh he's not somebody that this this uh uh political uh figure, but at the same time it was like it was a joke. Even when Hillary came to uh, Breakfast Club, it was a joke. Hot sauce in a purse, and, and we and we took that in, and we okay with that. We okay with um, with Jay Z uh, pushing Hillary we, as a as a community. We are okay with that. How does that how does that make sense? How are you for? How can you be for prison reform, but you back Hillary? How can you be for prison reform? But you want to see Kamala Harris uh, as a VP, or even at the time a, a president? It, it we have to make it make sense. So, anybody got any uh, pushback to that or comments? I agree. Who are we got? We got Emma. We got Tamia. We got uh, Duran. We got Isaac. We got Scott. Um, anybody mm -hmm. wanted to speak to that? I was just going to say, I totally agree with you. I mean, there's nothing I can, I can actually say to counteract that or come against that. You hit it on the head. I mean, I can't say anything to it. Honestly, I'm getting a little more educated than I was. I'm, I'm just going to be real because I really don't follow. I don't, I don't follow politics like that because, you know, I, it becomes frivolous arguments for me, and I just kind of don't want to go through that. So um, I'm being educated, and I'm grateful for it. Cause now I understand a little bit better what what's really happening you, versus you know what a good friend of I mine didn't. a good friend of mine told me uh, some um, some years ago before I moved to Georgia. Sometime to have a good relationship, you got to go through the bad stuff. Sometimes you, you got to feel that. So it's okay. That's, that's what this, this platform is for, for us to have our different idealisms and, and talk respectively with each other. And we, we come up, sometimes somebody might say something that I disagree with totally and I go research it and it makes sense. It might be in a different context, but it makes sense or it don't make sense. And I grow from that. If we're not talking, if we're not bumping heads uh, productively, we stay in the same spot. And I think uh, people, people are afraid, even with the Joe Bi uh, voting for Joe Biden or not, people are afraid to ask for policy. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Every, every other ethnic group is asking for policy. And we just like, we the only group to say we got to get uh, 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 Trump out without policy. That's my only kickback against that. You know what I mean? If if Joe Biden was like, hey, you know what I mean? You know, he, he gave his spill about the crime bill and what he was trying to get across. And he said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And this is the budget. Now, don't forget, they can say anything. I want to hear some budgets also. I want to hear policy and I want to hear budgets. I want to see where, what money you talking. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, we can no longer sit back and rely on them just to say, hey, I'm going to look out for you. Mm -hmm. No, that that ain't good enough. We we did that all the way from uh, we did that with uh, uh Clinton, 
uh, because he played the saxophone and he didn't inhale. And and that ended, that ended up being like one of the worst moves we could have did. Um, 305, yeah. you are back on the line. What's going on, Michelle? But you, you know, hey, I, what's I, up? I was going... Sorry. Somebody was about to say something? Yeah, I was going to chime in a little bit on uh, what you said. You know, it, it seems like um, a, a very good friend of mine, a very successful guy in terms of uh, finances, told me at one point, in my life and he said um isaac not until you learn how to walk away from deals you will never be successful you know uh, it seems like i had my whole method of operation was oh, a bird in hand and get into the bush you know so i took what i meant he said unless you learn how to walk away from mediocre deals you will never see a big deal you know regardless of the situation where you are you know and, and so we also have to understand the fact that we should not be taking mediocre policies and we not be taking uh, uh, um, somewhat how we feel like, oh, maybe this is better than nothing type of situation. We have to go for the goal. We have to be like, hey, this is what, this is what you're going to have to do for us to get our votes as a people. You know what I mean? Uh, and not until we, we, we come together, mobilize ourselves, and, and, and speak with the same voice it's going to be very hard for us to do that. And I think that's, that's, that will be the turning point for us as a people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Emma, you, Emma, you being quiet. What's going on? What's on your mind, Chicago? Mm-hmm. Got us on mute. Uh, Michelle, did you want to? Mm-hmm. Is Roger with you today, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 man. Peace and peace and blessings Hello. to you. I hope you're in good in good health. I appreciate the support. I'm doing well, thank you. Um, anybody had anything towards that? Then we can go. Hey, hey Ray, real real quick, sir. I'm I'm sorry. I kind of missed the last statement, but I heard you talk about. Joe Biden, and right now talking about our vote policy. Mm-hmm. I think right now, and I've said it before, I think you, you're right. You, you have to make politicians understand the power of our vote if you can't just have our vote. But I think at this point right now, it's kind of like that conversation should have been a couple of months ago because now we're at Joe Biden as our front runner. Mm-hmm. So when you say when you say those things, what is your alternative? When you tell him, okay, if he doesn't give you the policy, now what? So, so what are you telling them to do if he doesn't give you policy? To not vote for him, but they don't vote for him. Who are they voting for? What What is your expectation from that? Mm-hmm. So, as far as me, because my platform is so long, uh, short, I've been doing commentate, coming, uh, uh, I've been commentating on uh, all of the debates since it started last year. I've been pushing for for the longest as far as me personally and trying to get the word out as far as look at this um look at this uh candidate look what they saying from uh uh Buttigieg to uh Kamala to Wang to I was pu- I was trying to push that trying to get people involved trying to get people and everybody everybody was too worried about Meg the Stalin and her contract or or all this other stuff that was going on if y'all if y'all remember I was I was trying to push it, but my channel was small, so wasn't nobody listening as far as that. So we could we could have at least came together, and then we could have had pushback during that time. You see, well, what I'm saying? I think you say that I see you you say that you know people weren't listening, and and what you comment, people talking about making a stallion. I think that's because your circle we might have been small because my circle doesn't even talk about that. But maybe it's just the age difference, you know, different, you know, generation or mindset, whatever, you know, but, but I get it following your show, listening to you. And there's sometimes I disagree with you, but then, so what I started doing is, well, what really is Ray's angle? Cause I want to, I want to understand, you know, so, but now I'm like right now here today, when you say, what are you giving me? You know, what's your policy? But you're not giving anyone an alter, 
you know, alternative to if he doesn't give us any policy, so what are you what, what are you going to change your narrative now? What are you going to start telling people now? Because he's our front runner. Mm-hmm. If you're a Democrat, I'm sorry. Right. He's the front runner. So if you don't get these policies, now what? Are we are we going to sit on our thumbs and not vote? Because not voting, I'm not just saying not voting black people and Democrats is why Trump is in there. Because I also know, you know, a lot of Republicans that didn't vote because Trump was in there. They're like, my options is Trump or Hillary. And they're like, I'm not voting. So these are people that I, that I worked with. So there's a lot of people that didn't vote for a lot of different reasons. And not voting is why the, the race, what is, what it is what it is. But also, you know, how did we as Democrats let Hillary be our front runner? You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, so there's so many problems so deep that we can get down into, you know, where we are today. But now that the state of the, the world right now, you know, and the things that are going on, um, right, you know, one gentleman said, well, as a black person, you know, what, how did your life change? You know, um, let me well, t- for me, it, it gave... Let me touch. Let me touch on that first one that you uh, said, as far as the, the okay. not having uh, options. If if the game is not over and we got a bad hand, do we change our poker face? Do we give in? We still. I'm a Democrat, regardless. I'm not. I'm not saying okay. If Joe Biden don't say this, let's go. I'm. Uh, I'm putting in my chips for Trump, or I'm. I'm not voting. I'm gonna always participate. Once I started. Uh, learning about a little bit more, and, and, and I, I'm staying engaged regardless. I will be accounted for. But what I'm right. saying right now, we we still are because he. It's not November yet. We still in position to say, hey, this is what we need. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying throwing the cards. Right. I'm just saying we still in right. position. No, we to need say, we need a we need a lot of stuff. Mm. But you know, when you're saying you know hold your vote or you need to you need to earn my vote at this point, you know, it's kind of late to to say like you're uh, you're holding an ultimatum, like, Hey, we're not going to give you my vote, but we don't give the vote. Then we're just saying we're voting for the Republican. Not exactly. You know, so not exactly. Well, who else are you going to vote for? Because if you, if you don't vote for Democrats and you vote for, you will say, you know, that the third party out there, you know, that's that's still a vote not for for Democrats, you know. So that means the Republicans still get a stronger vote. That means I so, can still I can still push the I can still push the vote when it comes to locally. I can put that I can I can as far as my part of my city I can push that vote towards the the Senate seat. So no, absolutely, it's, absolutely, it's not absolutely that's so that's what I'm talking about with your narrative. It's just like because. Your narrative, you didn't finish it. You're right. like, okay, Biden, you know, what, what's your policy? All this, but you didn't finish it. Okay, if you're not going to give me that, the people are online. So we need, in, in order to impact policy and drive that vote, now we need to start looking locally and start changing there. Because once we start changing there, then we can change the big house. But I don't want voting. So, you know, so I, don't, I don't want Biden to think that we're just going to kill over. That's my whole, that's my whole point. That's what, that's, that was a whole uh, thing about the poker face. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm sorry. You can't play a you can't play a poker hand when he's our front runner. We're, we're we've already the hands have already been folded. So now you have to change your narrative. Mm-hmm. Like so now who can we focus on? So it's not Biden. It's focus on you know locally. That's who we need to focus our energy on. You know, make them earn it. Make them earn that vote. Because I guarantee you, when it comes November, you know. People are going to get out there and they're going to vote, especially the State of the Union right now because everybody is, is mad about something. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I'm like, and we, we talk about, you know, right now, why was this so different? You mentioned how come celebrities didn't say anything before. So when the, when the gentleman said, hey, this was different, why, I don't know, but this was different because I noticed that the people who are my peers, who are white, saying to me, like, oh, now I understand what Kat was saying. And I'm looking at it my first thought. I was like, oh, now you understand? But why? 
But then I had Cap to sit back. Cap don't understand what Cap was saying. Well, I he, mean, he we, can, we can say that. We can say that, but my, you missed my point. My point is that now there are white people saying, now I see what Cap was saying. Whether he knows or not, something changed in them. So like think, one of the gentlemen said before, this was different. So this is different. I, I think that's giving so too that's much. Why, you know, I think that's giving too much credit because Ali. I mean, you got decades and decades of different people that were saying the same thing. That had that had actually a bigger uh, uh, social influence than Cap. That, that's been saying the same thing. So it's not that they don't know. It's just like that. Your lifetime. It's just like that. Uh, that uh, that saying at the end of uh, uh. Uh, boys in the hood, they either know or they don't show what's going on in the ghetto. They know. I mean, you you have uh, Ali in the seventies, in the sixties. You got a uh, yeah, but that's that's who that you you only read about that, Ray. You only watched that on the news. No, I'm so saying the, the people you, who you saying is your audience. All they can do is read about it. So right now, who is that advocate right now? Right now, there is no the people is not advocates. Like uh, like Scott said earlier, everybody is reactionaries. Well, in, that, in that's opinion. our that's our culture. That's our culture. Someone talked about maybe it was you talking about you know people they'll meet for business. You know, yeah, but they're not meeting because this cause ain't affected them. Like you said, okay, how did how did Trump affect you? You know, so for me, how did it affect me? It didn't. It didn't affect me personally. My my lifestyle didn't change. Now I did lose some friends or people who I thought were friends. That changed, mm-hmm. but I'm but I'm but I'm okay with that. You know, so but the reality is, you know, that's our society right now. You know, it's more in a reactive mode. We're not in a proactive mode. So I think that's the the energy we need to to put into people. Let's be a little bit more proactive. That is being you know, proactive. Be a little bit more Asking for something is being proactive. Because a vote is wow. like I said, like it, and I put up a chart, and and a couple people last week had uh, had some uh, um, a couple rebuttals as far as the percentage of people that voted by race and um, for who. For Hillary and uh, Trump, and my my whole point of even putting that up is, if you look at the numbers, why is it our why was it our responsi- why is Trump our responsibility? Why ain't we putting that Why ain't we putting that same energy like Hispanics? Y'all need to vote to get Trump out of office. Whites, y'all need to vote to get Trump out of office. Asians, y'all need to vote to get Trump out of office. Because when you break down the numbers, even if the even if the ninety uh, even if the different uh, numbers in the different cities that uh, I forget who put that chart up, we still only that was me eleven. We still only eleven percent. Hispanics is fourteen percent, and then you go for Asians, and right. then you go for so we we it's, our people. But it's fought, not a matter. Our people fought for the right to vote, not fought for the you got to vote. So. No, no. They well, see, was... So even because I'm the person who put that chart up, so you missed you missed the point of the whole chart because you took it as you know why is it black person's responsibility? And, you know you brought up because you and I kind of went back and forth, and you you brought it up the Hispanic. I live 175 miles from the border of Mexico. Okay. <clears throat> I, my neighbors across the street from me, next door to me, are all Hispanic. Matter of fact, I'm Panamanian, so I'm Afro. I mean, I'm I'm Latino. Um, and black. So that conversation mm. is going down. They have that same conversation that we have. But because I represent the black community, so when I put something out there, that message is for, I got friends that are talking about, well, why should I vote? It doesn't, it doesn't count. Not saying you're responsible, but I don't want to hear you complain if you didn't do your part. So when they bring in a city like Milwaukee and say Trump, well, they say Wisconsin, 40 Forty thousand votes, but three hundred some thousand blacks in Milwaukee didn't vote. So my message wasn't saying it's your fault, black people. My message was saying don't complain, black people, when you didn't do your part. Mm-hmm. Don't I worry about what the other person's. Yeah. 
I, I have a question is, what is the purpose of our vote to you? To me? Well, to the young, to the gentleman speaking right now. I didn't oh. catch his name. Roger. My name is Roger. What is the, the purpose of, of our vote as, as black people? Yes. What is the purpose of our vote? Like when you go out to vote, what is your, what do you expect to happen when you vote? Well, I'm expecting change. Okay. If no change comes, if no change comes from your vote, like, okay, class example, Obama was in the house, in office. When he was in office, he was a Democrat. If I'm not mistaken, his first term, you had the house and the Senate. If I'm not mistaken, the so I can correct me if I'm wrong. The first two years, and, and votes made that happen. Okay, I'm with you. So now, the first four years, the first four years, you had the House, the Senate, and the White House. What change happened specifically for Black people in those first four years? Good question. He, he had two well, years. Two well, years one, in the Senate in well, but my two thing, years. Excuse me. Sorry, right. So you all are you all are totally missing the whole point of. Well, I had a question. This was my, this, technically this was my question. So it was the question to you was that. I just had a question. I just wanted to know your opinion on it. Okay. Yeah. So my, my opinion of it, well, like I said, us voting is why Barack was there. Didn't say Barack was the best thing for us, but that first, his first presidency was more than a lot of the policy and stuff because I had a teacher in the third grade tell me I couldn't be president because I was black. So now I'm able to tell my daughters that hey, you can do that. So, so okay, the question. Okay, after that, so just for clarification, there's one clarification you can keep going. It's um, our vote is for symbolism. Is what you're saying? No, I said on his first election, that's right. what that did for the black community. His second, because okay. you know, I had this argument with people, you know, white people at work, like. You know, oh, you guys just vote for because he's black. No, nope. I had to tell him we've already had our first black president. That was the first election. Now, that, now there's a difference in, in where we're going and things that need to happen. So all I was trying to, to say is like, you know, with Ray and his platform is that we need to get these people to start voting locally to make those, those type of changes locally so then it can speak globally. And then... And then my thing is, it's like, the, you can ask the same questions to you. How are you being changed by Trump still being in office? How has that changed your life? The same questions you asking us, how has that changed you by allowing him to still be in office? By not he being actually, the presidential ballot. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you that, and I, I am 40 years old at this point. Hold on a second. Yeah. I am 40 years old, so I've kind of lived through my adult my adult presidents was the Clinton administration, the Bush, the Obamas, and now uh, Trump. And I can honestly say in my adult life, nothing came from politics that actually changed my life, good or bad. Well, I, I mean, so it just depends because we are, um, we are Democrats, but a lot of you know, some of the Republican policy does, you know, especially when you're talking about taxes and things like that, it does, you know, fit us. However, Republican or Democrat, I just don't see how you you guys can, I just don't understand it, basically, like how you guys can think that Trump, by him being in the office, it can help anything. I haven't seen, like, anything great. At least there was, like, certain policies, different things, and I had already ran it down, you know, to Ray, like, a couple of times, like, policies that the um, under the Obama, Obama administration, they had implemented. But I'm saying, like, I haven't seen anything for us mm-hmm. under the Trump presidency. Well, I have a question there because I must have missed that. It may not have been on this podcast, but what under the, under the Obamas actually helped us policy-wise that you talked to Ray about? Well, he, had, he had a lot, and I can and I can put it up in the I can put it back up in the news feed. There was actually a lot, and then if nothing else, like Roger said, um, it allowed us to have hope to believe in change. It and I think that people started, you know 
believing that they could do more. Can I, uh, but I, I mean, I would submit them to you because I submitted them to uh, Ray, and he was like, "Well, that one was taken down after the first uh, term. This one was, you know." But at least there was some change. There, there was some policies that went into place for us. But I haven't seen anything, so I just don't understand how not voting on the presidential or just, you know, foregoing your vote. It's not, I don't understand how well, it's going to happen. Well, if I can respond to that, my, my, my biggest issue, I guess, with the vote just being such a primary position for us, and it seems to be the argument from one side of black society to the other side. And I guess my main thing is, is that I kind of live under the process. Say we get all of the laws changed that benefits us in a positive manner. Now we have to move on to the next phase, which will probably be who's going to enforce them. Because I've seen people generally, there's laws in the books. Like you say, 1865, you had the civil rights law. Then why do we have a 1965 civil rights law? If we got an 1865. You know what I'm saying? It seems like no matter what happens, even when you get policy, someone has to enforce it. And the people who are put in care to enforce it are the very same people who's beating you in the street. So for me, it's just like saying, I, I think when you come down to leveraging your vote, if you give it to one side, if the people know that you're going to, I always look like an abusive relationship. If a man beating on his woman, and if he know he can punch her in the face at any given time and she's not going anywhere, and he's in his nature to be violent, he's going to continue to be violent with her until she changes something. So you can't ask him to change because he's not. And see, appealing to them is not going to work because we've tried that. We've been doing that for decades. It doesn't happen. When it comes to, I hear everybody say they're Democrats. Well, up until the 18, 1960s, you were Republicans. What changed? They changed their minds, but even though they may have changed and switched sides, I look at theirs like wrestling to me. One moment you're a heel, the next moment you're a baby face. The next year you may be a heel. It seems to be going back and forth. But one thing black people are not is, uh, is, is politically astute. We don't understand how politics work. So what would happen is, is that you're having a vote. I'm with you. I think that you should vote if you're going to vote. Vote locally. Vote for the presidency. But we have to stop taking this illusion that we only have two choices to get something done. That's why we're stagnant in the position that we're in. I mean, so, you know, I, I, I can I can agree with you on that, that, you know, we have to educate ourselves on poly, I call it politics, you know, but, you know, when I was saying to Ray about, okay, what are your options? Biden, show me your politics, stuff like that. So I'm like, so maybe we don't need to focus on Biden because right now he is the, he's the front runner if you're a Democrat, but we do need to start focusing on locally. You're talking about what kind of change. So like here, you know, uh, in San Antonio, you know, there was a, a black sheriff running, you know, that hey, people were trying to lobby to, to get him in. So they feel like, okay, maybe you have a black sheriff in there that with some of this police brutality, they're going to think differently. Like, hey, maybe this black sheriff is not going to let this, this stuff go down, you know. So maybe you can kind of make change right there. But, you know, if we're not doing anything at all, we're not going out to the, to the poll, we're not understanding who's running locally, you know, we're, we're not going to do anything, you know. Well, so, I, th I, think that, I think you get in both ways by doing it. By lobbying your vote, you are doing something. Even if you hold your vote, you are doing something. Because like now, before 2016, I never heard black people talk about, oh, if we'd only voted, or I've never heard white people say, you should have voted, y'all the reason why we didn't get in office. Well, maybe you should have gave something specifically to us, and maybe you would have been in office. So for Biden right now, if it's so important to Biden, if Biden is really a good guy, Let's just keep it gangster. If Biden is a really good guy and he really wants to affect change in a positive manner, then why are you trying to avoid black people? And knowing that this base is what you need. No Republican, I mean, no Democrat has ever gotten into the White House without the black vote. So if you know this and you still refuse to do it, I can't just, I can't rely on the fact that I'm hoping that he's going to do something. I don't live in hope and I don't live in try or wish. I like tangible things. I like things that we can get done. I like things that if you want my vote, give me something for it. That's what quid quo pro means, something for something. You have to give me something for my vote. And saying I'm not going to do it or saying that I'll get crumbs off of whatever everybody else is getting, it doesn't fly for me. I view myself and my family as I pay taxes, I am a business owner, I have two children, I have two of them in college, 
I deserve the exact same thing that people do over in Wall Street or wherever you're talking about. And until you give me that, I cannot be faithful to any party when you're, when, with that situation. I can't be. So, so would you agree that by not voting, <clears throat> by not voting, that that is sort of a slap in the face to all, everyone that came before us? No, and I'm going to tell you why, and I'll give you a reason why I say that. Civil rights I'm movement, sorry. everybody, I, and I'll tell you why I say I feel that way. I even think about the civil rights. Civil rights movement, there was a bunch of young people just like out there now that we're a lot of black people out here saying they need to stop doing this, they need to stop doing that. They were doing what they thought was best for that moment. That's what they were doing with the knowledge that they have. There was no Internet. There was none of that going around. A lot of us back then were not politically astute. If we're not politically astute with the Internet, I can definitely tell you we weren't politically astute without the Internet. So what I'm saying is that if – Getting my vote, the only reason why I'm going to vote is because I had people die. I had family members die for just walking to the store in my family. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I just, that narrative can't fly today because since, since we've got into this country, we have been the bottom feeders of it. And I'm just not going to be part of the bottom feeding. I know voting for Democrat will keep all of black America, the percentage, I think race of 11, I remember 11, 12, 13, I've heard it. No matter what it is, we're always the bottom bearer. When, when Mexicans came over, they were less than us. Now they're ahead of us. Asians came over, now they're ahead of us. We have to stop, but everyone else is not giving their vote away. I've never heard an Asian community then say, I'm voting because of this. I'm voting because, no, they vote to get tangible stuff. We have to understand that in our community. We can't eat, we can't eat symbolism. We have to get tangible. Ray said on one of his shows before, 2050, we will have no wealth in our community. None. So with no wealth, just, we have to do something different. I'll just say that um, we think so differently that I'm just going to say that we're just going to have to agree to disagree because if you don't think it's a slap in the face to all those that came before us, like there's no way that we're going to see each other's point of view. And that's like How, the way that I, I, I always heard people say, and I have a question for you with that, when people say it's a slap in the face for people who died for it, right? If they knew that voting for Democrat would get them nothing, do you think that they would have voted for them? Do you think they would have I'm actually even, went out and tried to die? I'm not even saying that. I'm saying you saying don't vote. And I'm saying No, no, that, no, that, no. I said don't be I said I didn't ever say vote. I said don't be loyal to one party with your vote without asking oh. for something tangible. That's what I said. And, okay, well I can agree with that. I can agree with that, but no, I thought um, that I heard you say don't vote on the presidential or I thought I'm pretty no. sure that you said that. No, I've never said that you should. I've never told someone not to vote. I think it is, it is part of the process. The political process is part of the process to get us out of our condition. But so is the economic part. We never discussed that. Why is, why is majority, why we make up less than, we, 99% of us work for other people who are non-black people. That's a slap in the face to all the black business owners we had in our culture before the 1960s. But nobody's starting businesses and hiring each other when it comes to that. But it's just this one aspect that everybody's keen on is the vote. Why don't we have our banks no more? Why don't we have our schools? That's a slap in the face to all those people who built them. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not so much as I'm not saying not vote for them. I'm just saying we have to do it on multiple fronts, and this can't be the first step. It has to be part of the step, but it can't be the first one if you're going to give it away without getting anything in return. So one thing you just said, why don't we have our, black, our, our banks? Why don't we have our, our schools? No, we have those. The question is, why are we not supporting our banks and supporting our schools? So that's, that's the way that you think. You know, well, I have money in the black bank. Uh, I have, like I said, so that's just for me. And even in that money in the black bank, the thing that bothers me about that, they're using the same criteria that white people use at their banks to not loan money to us, too. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm just in, I'm in the mindset of our culture is that we have to think different than a European mindset. Things have to well, be totally different. Point. That's what that's my point. It wasn't you know, it's it's the culture that we have to change as a black society. You know when we're supporting. Yet you know the black bank they're gonna they're gonna do banking the same way other banks do banking. You know you know if you're not gonna give black loans then you're just like all the other banks. You know, so why support us? But it has to 
start it has to start somewhere. Like we have to support. I'm a business owner, you know, like you, but my thing is like, you know, oftentimes I found that, you know, black people will expect some type of discount from me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but we'll go pay premium for the other person. Mm-hmm. Well see that's conditioning. You know, so and like, I experienced that too. I, I experienced that same thing with it on a daily basis, but my issue for that is that's a whole other argument to me, and we can go there, but my whole thing is when it comes to that is a large portion of that is the fact of they know they can get away with it. We, yeah, we devalue our stuff, but that's been conditioned. If there's, there's, book, there's stories out here where you can read. There's books where they condition us to devalue our own stuff. So that's a psychological problem in our community. We can't just say we don't support each other or we ask for discounts. Why do we don't support each other? Why, don't we, why do we ask for discounts? That's a psychological problem. We have to work on that. We have to stop pointing fingers at them and just understand why. And that's and then you have then once you understand why, now you can start start having a solution for it. Uh, right. Well, the way that the way that ties into the politics when you're talking about devaluing, you know, our product, it goes back to devaluing our vote. When you when you talk about like both of you all talk, you already talk about a hey, what policy we're getting. Because we're devaluing, you know, them, so they it feels like they it doesn't matter. So that's what I was trying to lead to when I about you know blacks devaluing. You're right. That's a whole other conversation we we can have another time and try to figure out how we get past that. But it's just about the black community devaluing, you know, if it's our 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 product, you know, our money, you know, our vote, you know, it's like we have to. To stand up as a society, you know, for whatever party you choose to, to vote for, you know, end of the day, you, you should feel like you're getting something. You know, I'm one of those people that if there is that middle ground between, you know, the Republican, Democrat, I'm toting the line because I know some of the policies affect me just because of my, you know, my economic um, point in life. You know, so sometimes I'm, I'm looking at it like, oh, okay, this is, this is a little bit different. But I also look at the other side because I got family members who are in a different place than I am, you know. So, um, so it, it, it is it is a little bit of a struggle, you know. But you're right, you know. We do need to to get a little bit more education when it comes to to politics. Uh, I got a little pushback to uh, Scott and Roger with that. Um, I think every every ethnic group, everybody, just let's let's say everybody is always gonna look for the best deal. Um, and I, I get the, they might not value the black business, but even, I mean, with even selling training, everybody was trying to get a cheaper price for training. And if you go, you know, when you go get a car, you're going to try to talk the guy down. So it's, I think that's, that's just trying to get more for what you paying for. I don't think that's a, a just designated to us. Well, I think the Ray, and I think the pushback on that one is, is that, and not to not to push back too hard, but I would say I agree. We do haggle with every other group, but I, we're the only group that actually pride ourselves on how much we did spend. So I've dealt with white people, and they talk about how much they saved on something. So that's a psychological problem. So if it's Gucci, we want to buy Gucci because it's expensive. We want to buy Fenty because it's expensive. And see, for us, but when they come up, they do devalue our product. That's why they always want the cheap price. So that's why I say it's a psychological problem, less, more or less than anything else. Right. Or a, a, a systemic problem. Because even with you, if you look at, if we're talking about clothing lines and you look at uh, FUBU, they didn't, they didn't want to sell that company. It's because Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger, who was... Uh, uh, um, top in the the urban department. They they made the manufacturers in the the um, I can't think of the name of the uh, the department. They pushed them to push back on uh, Fubu to to pay more to get their clothes made. So they kind of they actually pushed them out of the industry and forced them to sell. Just the same as uh, Cross Colors. They had the same mm-hmm. exact story. Like, Carl Kanai, too. Carl, Carl Kanai. Mm-hmm. Carl Kanai, ball game. So they, they got kind of pushed out of <laughs> – they got pushed out of uh, the industry. And and it's a lot of – in every industry that happens. 
every industry. If you go to music, uh, you you talk about Sam Cooke. You can talk about even uh, the merger between oh, yeah, definitely. Death Row and uh, uh, Rap a Lot and uh, uh, Murder Inc. And they shut that down real mm-hmm. fast. Anytime, Same thing. The, the only industry right now that I think because it's it's not a it's not a strong tap on it is STEM. Everything else is controlled. STEM is the only industry, you know, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. That's the only industry that's like almost untapped. Everything else right now is like controlled by a system, and they have they have a system to where they can weed out, they can they can monopolize that uh, industry. They they actually do that kind of in STEM too. And the only reason why I speak to that is because I actually am in technically in that field. And what they generally do with that field is just like they do with any other gig. Especially now, if you're doing your own thing, a tech startup, your own thing, it's kind of harder. But then you have to wonder about funding is your problem. Mm-hmm. What I generally run into when you're talking about STEM or any other industry, what happens is the system is in place to push you out. So if you don't own anything. You don't control it. So if you, have to, you have to interview for it. Now you've got to deal with that person's racism, biases, his prejudices, and we go through it every day. And we are constantly trying to navigate their, their prejudices instead of owning our own. And it is hard to own our own because they do come after us. But I heard someone say recently talking to like an ant. If you ever stumped out an ant hill, and I agree with this, come back 30 minutes later, he's rebuilding that ant hole, the ant mold again. And see, that's what we have to get to that mind stuff that, yes, anything that you build is going to take away from them, so they're going to come after you. But you're going to have to stand strong and realize that eventually you may be able to overcome them, but you have, it starts with the mindset that you can beat them to start. If you don't even try, you've already lost. Marcus Garvey said that, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. And that, and right. that, that, that's, that's the focus of the, um, the, the show today is transforming the government. I'm glad you said I'm I'm glad you, you, you framed it like that because – it's the government's job to regulate that. It's the government's job to regulate that. So companies can't monopolize. The only issue that I have with transformative government is just one thing, and it is the fact of I agree with it. I think it's needed, and I think that that's going to be a, a great leeway into us doing better. But it's like, if you don't have any control inside the government, you're, they're not going to let an individual come in and take that over. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, where's your leverage to take it over? If you take over a merger of a company, one of the companies have to be struggling most of the time for to lose that business, to, 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 to lose that merger. So what I'm saying for us is, is that you do need transformative government, but also, too, you got to have to understand if you give it away, then it's not going to transform anything. They're never going to change. The, we have to get to the point to understand these people have been doing this every time they come in existence with some other group of people. They are not, they cannot coexist with other people. So to think that you can leverage them without any leverage, it's not going to happen. Now you're trying to appeal to their, to their conscience. And what did Kwame Torrey say? They have no conscience. So I can't appeal to that. I need something tangible I can hold on to. Uh, Isaac, you still on the line? Yeah, I'm here, right? Remember uh, uh, some years back, uh, maybe four years ago, we were talking about uh, thinking about getting a, a sugar ca- carrier from uh, and send it to Africa? Yeah. What, uh, and this is, the reason why I bring that up is because it, it makes sense to what he just said. We, me and you talked about the difference, the, di- the different things that would stop us from doing that. Do you remember what those were? Yeah, I think we talked in terms of where the bus stops. I mean, right, right. you're definitely going to have to go through a white person uh, to get that line of credit that we were looking for. And, and uh, that, that, that was going to be, that was going to be the, um, the dead end, you know, because we don't own that thing. Like he said, mm-hmm. And 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 with that, that's why I said it's transformer government. They supposed to protect a person. Um, uh, they supposed to protect 
the, the business owner. We shouldn't be able to, we shouldn't have to go through that. If you have, if you have the means, you should be able, whether it's, this, it's doing that or buying a house, you shouldn't have to go through hoops. Everybody should be able to have the same exact. If you have the cash or if you have the means, you should be able to, um, uh, to acquire whatever business you're trying to do. But there's always a roadblock. And the only one I don't see right now, and and um, and I'm not in STEM. It's just a couple of things that I was read. I mean, yeah, the couple of things that was that I was reading that was untapped was STEM. Like every resource is tapped, every industry right now is tapped. So being innovative and creative uh, in that field, I think that's where we can get some head headway. But that's just my opinion. Anybody got any pushback to that? Besides Scott, <laughs> nah, I'm good. So I think today was a good build. I appreciate everybody. Um, I'm still talking. I'm just. I will uh, say this, Ray. Can yes, I sir. say this, Ray, real quick? Who is this? Tell the sister. Uh, tell the sister. I'm not angry with her. I could tell she was a little frustrated with me. I, <laughs> I, I wasn't trying to. I, I no, I I just get like upset when people don't really. I don't know. I get upset when people are so overly critical with a Democratic candidate. I just don't understand it. I try to wrap my mind around it. I talk to Ray numerous of times, numerous times about it, and I just get like passionate about it because like the same that we give in Biden, we don't give, we don't put on Trump, and so I just get so frustrated with that. But it's not personal. You know, and and I, okay. and like I tell Ray, I do appreciate hearing other people's you know point of views, but I just get passionate about it because I just don't understand it. Oh, can can I can I reply to that? I think I want to chime I, in on that a little bit. I think uh, it's high time we 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 recognize how to separate our politics uh, from our our policies that we're looking for, and and that's the reason for this platform so we can learn more about policies as well as um, uh, 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 politics, you know, uh, as who we want to be loyal to and what we're looking for. And if we're not getting it, you know, it, it's just some uh, information out there that we need to recognize uh, before we can actually give our vote to people. You know, it's not that we, we don't want to vote for you, but what are you giving us in, in return? You know, so I think it's very informative for especially the young folks so they can know how to vote. Right. And then my uh my reply was just uh it's not uh, if you look at it like a basketball game you you not going to um if 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 the the Bulls and the uh LA Lakers is playing when Jordan around that time and your team is the Bulls you not going to be like oh man uh magic why you missed that shot like you going to be focused on trying to trying to motivate your people to get the most out of the game. Right. That's that's my that's my idealism. Like I got to be critical on the, the people that that I'm for in order to get the best out of it. Like we all I, But am I It's it's just oh, go ahead. it's just like when people say something that might sound funny and they say no homo, people know I don't have to say I'm no homo. I'm not gay. So I don't have to say no homo. Because people know me. So it's like, it's the same thing. I shouldn't have to say, I'm, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump supporter. I just, I just see things that we could do better at, that we could benefit more from and, and stretch. That's how I look at it. And then I have a responsibility to the young people that, that didn't call today, that didn't call in today. I'm going to talk to them because they, they said they wanted to talk. Um, that uh, I have a responsibility for them to say, hey, man, y'all have to start looking stuff for what it is and what's real and and when you're getting BS. Because a lot of our community is getting BS out of a lot of situations and a lot of positions that we deserve and that we earned. You know what I mean? Um, if, if you look at, you know, if you hate your job, I hate my job right now, and another job that needs you 
say, hey, come over here. We'll pay you the same thing they paying you. And you know they need you for them to be successful. I'm going I'm to negotiate that price. In my head, I'm like, shit, I'm trying to get away from this job and I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go. But I'm going to definitely bring up the fact that I want to negotiate my price even though I know I'm going to go. You know what I mean? And and that's that's the only thing. I'm not saying uh, not vote. I'm not saying – I'm just saying I'm not going to let them know that at this particular time. It's not November yet. So I have to keep pushing, like keep asking, keep asking. And, you know, once November comes, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Let's do what we got to do. But until then, like I got to keep that poker face on. Ain't no, I'm pretty sure they're not watching my channel, so it don't matter that I, I said that. But – you know. So, yeah, it's a couple of things. I just got to, you know, I just, you know, I, I do enjoy hearing your guys' um, viewpoint, you know, and that's what makes the world go round. Everybody's not going to think the same. But, you know, I do have a hard time with, um, because when I, I talk to, I have a lot of friends that are Republicans, and when I talk to them, other no matter what, but see, this is where we're, you know, divided on. And I just don't see how, like, with Trump being in office, how that's going to be good for America or for me. And so I just, you know, when I hear, you know, the criticism of the Democratic Party or the nominee, like, that's all that's being received. And we're not giving no pushback. Like, if there's someone in office right now, he has an obligation to do stuff for us right now, but we're not pushing that. But right now we can't get him out of office until November. So if if Kamala Harris is saying... No, if The if, whole time if Kamala, he was in office. He was in office these whole four years. I'm, I mean... If, yeah, I'm saying, like, we could have been pushing that the whole time, but, you know, it's like... I'm not big on just, you know, bashing you know, the Democratic Party, and everybody got so mad with Biden when he said, like, you ain't black. <laughs> like, I didn't I didn't understand that. I didn't understand why we were so mad about that. He, he especially said, since, um, especially since, like, Trump says things, like, way more vulgar, way more, but then we want to be so hard on ourselves. You know, that's yeah, but just what I didn't when, when you, when you, when you, yeah, but but like Ray said, you know, if you you're not playing on, uh, if they're not on your team, then um, you want to get the best out of your team. So, uh, but he's our leader. Like, so if you're our want. leader, you still can do stuff for us. And actually, oh, the pushback with that, I was going to say something else, but the pushback with that, everybody that was trying to lobby to Trump. From Steve Harvey, Kanye, well, Kanye was, I can't really put him, but he did try to lobby. Everybody that, <laughs> that, that tried to sat, sat down with him got criticized and got almost canceled. Everybody, except the only people that didn't get uh, 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 any pushback for sitting with the uh, administration was Charlemagne and T.I. for the, um, 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 uh, what do you call that, um, I forget Black what it's called. Show. The uh, property thing. Well, the um. Well, that well, well that's easy because everyone knows Charlemagne and Ti are, are always one hundred. The other characters that you talked about, you know, sometimes a little bit suspect, but we we already know Charlemagne Ti is always one hundred. Well, I say Ti. I don't. I, don't, I can't even say Ti. Uh, more than Steve. You think he more than than Steve Harvey? Like Steve Harvey oh, actually yeah. had a, a plan to uh, to help black businesses. That's what he was sit. That's what he went for. Um, opportunity zones. That's what Ti and uh, Charlemagne sat down with him for, because uh, Nipsey Hussle was originally supposed to. But it's it's the same. The same thing with Ti and Joe Biden, which is not the same. But as far as the criticism, like if you for the people. You have to atone for saying, hey, my girlfriend got a girlfriend and I'm messing with all these chicks and the music he was making. He, ha he, he has not apologized or even brought that forward. The same thing with Joe Biden with the crime bill of 94. He hasn't. I think that's where, well, in my case, why I'm critical of him, because a lot of us, a lot of our family members, a lot of our 
friends, a lot of the reasons why black men didn't get uh, the same time that white men got was because of that crime bill. So it's like you, you have to at least, uh, you know, admit to your mistakes and say, okay, I made a mistake. Let's move forward as a culture. Now, yes, Trump is an idiot. And a lot of times he says stuff that don't make sense. But at the same time, if I'm if I'm if I'm a if your policies is almost identical to the person we got, it's like, come on, man, we if we going if we gonna go vote for you, you have to you have to hang with us too. You have to give us something, not just you know celebrity. And, and and a lot of people that were debating last year when it was coming to the front runner, they gave us celebrity. Um, I can't think of the dude's name. But he brought he even brought juvenile on stage and 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 Bernie Sanders got got a uh, uh what's the girl the Cardi B. Like they never go to economists, they never go to uh people that studied uh 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 political science or anything. They go to the entertainers. And that's that right there, that statement right there is so disrespectful to us. Don't tell me you cool. Tell me what you how are you gonna affect change? Because when I see the I see the different town halls and I see the different discussions, when they go to other communities, they have plans, they have budgets. And that's that's the only thing that I'm saying. Like give us the same due, give us the same respect. That's all I'm saying. That's it. You know what I mean? Um I can agree with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. And I think it just got when Eminem did that rap about Trump uh, a couple years ago. That's when I start watching because Eminem uh, was quiet when it comes to social uh, social commentary. He been quiet his whole career, so that's the kind of thing with me uh, partially being in the entertainment industry here in Georgia and understanding uh, how uh, scenario not scenarios. I can't think tonight. Um, Prop, not propaganda. Uh, I can't think of what, but how um, uh, storylines are made and how they push them. Because I know, I know a lot of a lot of uh, uh, not black leaders, but are in those groups like the NAACP. I've been out with them, the Urban League, like out with them, kicking it. And you 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 wouldn't think that they. Uh, the conversations and thing you wouldn't think that they they for the people if if you if you go out with them and see them in a comfortable stance. So that's why I say we have to hold the people that uh, we are for accountable. Anything else in the news before we uh, shut her down? Did anybody want to talk about D, you still on the line? Emma still on the line? Isaac? Uh, the dynamic duo, Roger and Michelle? Yeah, I am. I just wanted to say I really enjoyed listening to, listening to everybody's views or viewpoints and being able to voice my. It's been a pleasure talking to everybody, and I will be back. I appreciate that. You stay safe in Chicago, cause I I don't want right. I don't want to hear uh, somebody t- stole your Jordans. You don't own up here. Nothing at all. Yep. Um, but yeah, this uh, just for the people that's watching on YouTube and Facebook, the people that's left uh, to stay with us, I appreciate it. This platform is meant for us to have a conversation between the generations. Um, I'm slowly trying to get the group of, uh, teenagers that I, um, assist, um, open and to express their political feelings or even learn because we all learning to get, well, for me, I can't say for y'all, but for me talking to y'all, I'm, I'm learning and I go back and this person say this, like Michelle, you sent me the, um, the magic Johnson, uh, proposal for the, the, uh, I think a hundred million dollars was it? 
Yeah, and that, he was going to help out mm-hmm. and I read people a, that weren't able to get minority business that wasn't able to get a, a piece of the stimulus. So it's like things that we can trade off to grow. You know what I mean? If we stay in a bubble and we stay in our own head, sometimes we miss the jewels uh, that we wasn't uh, a, a, a privy to. So, again, this this is this is uh, always going to be an open conversation. Everybody views is um, is warranted, is wanted, is welcome. Um, some people might get passionate. I like get passionate. Some people might not agree with me. I might not agree with them, but it's not about me. It's about the conversation and us sitting down and showing the young, the younger generation that you can have a conversation and have different idealisms and still um, be uh, uh, cordial towards each other. We don't have to reality TV show and throw drinks in each other's faces or write bad posts about each other. Um, that's my that's my goal, and hopefully I can uh, build it to uh, a nonprofit to where we hope uh, help and be resources uh, within our communities. Um, again, I don't ask for donations. I don't ask for um, uh, money or anything. If if anybody, because I do get uh, inboxes and stuff that they want to support financially, and I always push them towards uh, different people that's doing something. Uh, that are actually to have boots on the ground like uh, Antonio Moore or uh, Yvette Carnell or Sandy Darity or uh, Rhonda uh, Mary, different people that uh, that I believe in that are really out here, you know, um, talking to the people that actually need to talk to and pushing for change. And then I always support black businesses. So if you have... A business you can inbox me and we will promote you weekly without a charge and as we grow uh your views from us will grow um if anybody got a business uh on the line now if you wanted to push your product it is welcome and then uh weekly if you send me your logo and information i'll put it out there Well, we have our business. We have our business is Webzito, W E B X E D O dot com, and it's basically a website uh, web design business. So, if you're, we basically uh, we we love to support new businesses, small businesses, black owned businesses, um, but we we put out like a great product. And so if you get a chance, go check us out. And, you know, if anybody that has a new business, they're looking, you know, for a great website, check us out. Anybody else? Emma, Duran, Isaac? I will, yeah, I'll I'll send you my information. But basically, my company, um, I, I offer creative services for other small business owners and entrepreneurs, and it's just basically dosmedia.com, D as in David, O S S media.com. Okay. Uh, Duran, you still on the line? Yep. You want to promote? So I've got Undeniable Apparel. That is U N D E E N I A. B L E apparel dot com. And also on Facebook and um Instagram too. All right. Cool. Isaac, your podcast and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. Yeah, I got I got my podcast uh uh and it's Liberation in Christ and uh, uh I teach more on um uh, um scriptures and and whatnot. I also have my body uh by Isaac uh fitness which i'm located in the Petrie corners area so if you know anybody that is looking to uh lose weight or build strength or tone yeah i'm in the Petrie corners area in georgia i've been in the business for 22 years now so um uh, uh, i got a reputation as well so businesses are welcome i appreciate it i'll be on the line i'll be talking about fitness next week actually on this um on Ray's uh, 
on Ray's platform. So I'm looking forward to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, uh, again, this is uh, we 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 switch out our resources. We try to uh, build within the community, um, and it's just an open forum so we, where we can talk. Um, over the weekend, I met a 13 year old that started a business, and uh, what impressed me with her, I'll wait until uh, I finalize it with her parents. But what impressed me with she knew her target, she knew her target audience. She knew how to test market. She knew her, uh, you know, uh, her. Um, um, she just knew business, and I know a lot of people that tell me about their business uh, when they when they pitch it or when they try to uh, explain it to me. They didn't they didn't have it down like she had, and she was thirteen. So, and that, that's not a knock to nobody, but um, for her to be thirteen, she's on the right track for her business. So. Um, Hopefully I can um, get her. And then I know a lot of uh, young kids is trying to do different things. So I, I really want them to start getting comfortable and talking about the stuff that they talk to me about so they can get uh, a different perspective than just my perspective. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just an open forum for the community to, uh, to talk with. Hey, Ray, what's that um, young lady's business, the 13-year-old? Um, she has a, a, a lip gloss line. She has lip gloss. The only reason I'm, I, I haven't, um, I'll send you the information, but I just want to clear everything with her parents before I start uh, giving too much information. But I'll, I'll, I'll chat with you uh, uh, on the side. I just want to make sure, you know, she got yeah. everything is good, just just out of respect. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, and I'll, I'll send you uh, the information that I have on her. She got a yeah, uh, I love that. She have a, a commercial too that she showed us um, over the weekend, and okay. it was like wow, like that's impressive. Mm -hmm. So um, our youth is 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 smarter than. Uh, what a lot of us think, and I'm not speaking on you just in general, because even with myself, with my kids, with driving, it's like I, I get so worried, but they, they drive better than I do. So um, I, I think uh, the mind is there. I think that the, the just making sure we mold and, 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 and leave it guidance. open. Yeah, guidance and, and make sure we uh, listen as well. Is teach because they have a lot of uh, jewels that we can grow from because they have as being the youth they have the energy and the stamina to do it and we have the wisdom you know so the combination we can't be stopped and it start there it start there but um i hope everybody is in good health i hope everybody is uh uh, hey Ray, Ray, thank you for this platform, man. You're doing a great job. Keep, 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 keep it up. I appreciate you, man. You know it, it's gonna grow. Um, we have a lot of people that watch. Uh, depending on what topic we have, between 150 to 300 and something people um, that tune in, in and out. You know, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, oh, we had some people that uh, chimed in. I didn't say nothing to nobody on YouTube. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Angela. Hey, Robin. Jabari. So that's the thing that I'm, I'm still still working on, making sure I can keep focus on both. Um, trying to figure out how to get it on Instagram, but. They don't have an open forum for the software that I use to stream between YouTube and Facebook. Um, and then I know how to set up a uh, podcast and everything. If anybody need help, uh, inbox me and we can have a chit chat and what you need to get started. Uh, all the voices are needed. Uh, it's all about growth and um, making sure that we getting uh objective information out there so that people can choose for themselves the right way instead of being forced fed stuff. That's just my opinion. Yay! 
So, did anybody want to uh, bring up any other topics? Uh, you know, we normally go for three, four hours on here, and I think we at uh, I don't know what we at three fifty four mark being live. Anything in the news? Because I know I had a couple things, but I didn't use my notes today, and I didn't use the uh, the structure that I was going to use today. I just wanted to see what y'all was feeling. Um, and let's uh, where is my note? Duran, you got anything on the news that you've seen? Uh, no, we kind of covered pretty much a wide variety of things, in my opinion. Cool, cool, cool. Um, who else is on? Emma, anything on the news that you've seen that was kind of weirder? No, not necessarily. I mean, I've just been really tuned into I don't know what's been happening this week. It's pretty much it. And well, the one thing that did stand out to me was that um, the president, he um, ended his relationship with the World Health Organization. Does that have anything to do with anything? Uh... I'm not sure I seen that earlier, but I didn't get a chance to read it. I seen a uh the news clipping in the uh not New York Times, the Washington Post. And I haven't uh okay. I haven't looked at it yet. Uh I can send you the link. I don't know if you read it thoroughly, but I've been doing a couple of things. I got uh But that what that is kind of kind of weird. It stuck out to me. That's that's all. I didn't really go too far into it, but I just thought it was kind of random. Okay. Um, and and Ray, what's what's the COVID num what's the COVID numbers looking like? I haven't really had the chance to look at it. Uh, uh, I haven't looked at it, but haven't any the the news the the news haven't been talking about it. Um, I know they around this time it was supposed to be three, uh, two million deaths. So that's 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 what I wanted to talk about earlier. I had that in my notes. Um, how uh, since they whoever I don't know who, but since the goal wasn't reached, it's like it's some of this stuff not staged, but like uh, uh, intended. Is it intended? Because you think you figure you start a, a riots, people are around each other, you know, mm-hmm. is that going to boost up the numbers in 14 days? So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's just an un- un- uneducated guess. I'm I'm not a, a scientist and a, or a doctor or anything, but when you look at it, it's like, damn, like we had 100,000, but they was uh by this time, it was supposed to reach 2 million in the United States. And then they just canceled out COVID. Ain't no, no news outlets is talking about COVID at all no more. When we had day-to-day, uh, and I'm not saying it's not real because I know uh, people that had it, uh, and I know people that died from it. Um, so I'm not saying that it's not real, but I'm just saying the narrative that the media used um, – it's kind of hitting a little different, as my kids would say. Um, so it's just that now that it, they haven't been talking about that, they haven't been enforcing it. You know, people were getting uh, uh, dragged out of cars and knocked out for not wearing masks, and you know, and now you know. So I don't know. That's just. Uh, my opinion on it. Roger, Michelle, did y'all see anything in the news or anything that you wanted to bring up that we could discuss right now? Well, fast? I want to respond to asked about the um, the corona numbers and stuff like that. So I actually have a, a website that um, I have posted it, but I have the information. So as of today in the United States, cases were at uh, almost 2 million, 1.8 million cases in the U.S. Death. Mm-hmm. 106,000 and recovered 615,000 um, in the U.S. Okay. So, 
So, but I don't even think, for the update. I don't even think we had uh like every day they was having a uh the the mayors and stuff uh giving reports and uh the CDCs giving reports and I haven't since this riot stuff happened I haven't even seen anything on it. Yeah. Is so it, the and according to my chart, so we're we're up. Um it's like eight thousand um cases. Uh, well, that's worldwide. I'm sorry. So that's eight thousand um, from yesterday, and uh, three hundred and six deaths from yesterday. Mm. But of course, that is from the World World Health Organization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was a real productive. Uh show i appreciate everybody that called in i appreciate everybody that's watching um everybody that watched that came in and came out um um it's a couple cities that uh i wanted to talk to but they didn't like phoenix dc who else was in there um just to see we had cali talking but he didn't really say much about what was going on uh So, yeah, I guess unless y'all had anything else, we'll close it out today. Again, I appreciate everybody. I love and honor y'all. Thank you. Thank you for the support. If y'all need anything from me, hit me on the hip or inbox me, and uh, we'll do it like that. You know, I'm always about uh, promoting (laughs) each other. Good job, Ray. Yes, great job. Thanks, Ray. Michelle, yeah, bro. Michelle, Michelle was about to say, "With your Trump loving ass." <laughs> <laughs> Don't even start. You know I'm gonna take. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, yeah, definitely. Bye, you guys. Definitely. I- definitely. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Have a good one. Peace and blessings. All right. And, uh, good night. Stay healthy. Please.